Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Did you know you can support the channel by joining? If you enjoy the videos, it's something to think about. On to the stories. This is my channel's monthly compendium for the month of December 2022. Case file number 850, written by Ciro Contexto. I was in two places at the same time. I live with my mom and brother. Me and my brother were in the living room sitting next to each other. From where the couch is, you can see the bathroom door where my mom was brushing her teeth to go to bed. From one moment to another, there was nobody in the bathroom anymore, which I thought was strange because I didn't hear the door open. And then I got up to check where my mom was since it was odd to me, because she always says goodnight and that this time she didn't. I saw her room door was shut, meaning she already went to bed, but I still checked the other room just in case she was there, but she wasn't. She heard me open the door to the other room and so she texted me, Did you already come out of the bathroom? I didn't see you, that's why I didn't say goodnight. I then replied that I didn't even go to the bathroom, that I was in the kitchen and the living room the whole time for the past two hours. She told me that I wasn't and that I had gone into the bathroom right after. I go back to the living room and ask my brother if my mom went to bed already, to double check. He said she did, and my mom says that she said goodnight to everyone but me because she didn't find me even though I was sitting at the couch right next to my brother, who she did say goodnight to. I was already so confused about what happened because I knew for a fact that I never got up from the couch, much less went to the bathroom. The only time that I got up was when I realized my mom wasn't in the bathroom anymore. At the time that she left the bathroom, or rather that I just saw no one was in there, I was on the couch and somehow she came and said goodnight to my brother, but she didn't see me sitting there? It's like I wasn't there. We were out of phase. I didn't see her at all either. To me, it's like she never even came into the living room. How is it possible that her and my brother were all in the same place, but according to them, I wasn't there, and according to me, she's the one that wasn't there? But then also, who was in the bathroom? My mom said that after she left, I went in, and that the door was locked with the light on, except I never went in, nor did my brother. It was just us at the house, and none of us had gone to the bathroom after her. My brother then tells me that my mom said goodnight to him twice. The first time was before she went into the bathroom. He also said that she said goodnight to me too, when I was sitting at the kitchen chair. That's when I thought that I was completely losing my mind because I was never at that kitchen chair and my mom never said goodnight to me. My mom doesn't remember saying goodnight twice but my brother is fully convinced she did. I don't know who my brother saw at the kitchen chair with my mom but it wasn't me. I was never there and my mom says she's not sure about saying goodnight twice. All she's sure about is not seeing me in the kitchen and seeing someone in the bathroom. There's no way my brother saw me in the kitchen chair and my mom saw me in the bathroom when at the time they claimed that I was on the couch and never moved from there. So my three concerns right now are, how did I not see her and did she not see me when we were in the same room? It's not possible. Two. If the bathroom door was locked and the light was on and everyone swears they didn't go in, then who was in the bathroom? 3. Why does my brother claim he saw me somewhere I know I was never at? Case file number 851, written by Cupstacker Bob. Lost contacts randomly re-emerge. My girl and I share a studio apartment in New York City and we have deadbolt locks. She wears contacts and one morning shook me awake because she couldn't find her contact case. She has a few cases but only uses one at a time. I got up too and we looked and looked and looked. Not in any of her regular places. Not under the bed, not in any bags or backpacks, not on the nightstand. She has to go about her day so she begrudgingly opens another set. We go about our lives remarking how weird it was she lost them and the case. One week passes, and while getting into bed I see her case on my nightstand and remind her to take them out before she falls asleep. To my surprise, instead of reaching towards my side, she reaches towards her nightstand and takes out her contacts from them. I become very confused and grab the case I see and show her that there are contacts in there. I swear it just popped out of nowhere in the center of my nightstand. Super weird. We have a super small place. There's no way we overlooked looking in the first place we'd look. 
Bonus file, written by I Really Like Cows, when the ghost bear attacks. Hey everyone, I've been thinking a lot about a family trip to Colorado I took when I was 15. This was about April or May 2012. My family and I had driven up from San Antonio, Texas and were vacationing in Colorado for a bit. We stopped at many places just to take in the views and stretch our legs, but ultimately we decided to spend our first couple of nights in Estes Park. On our way up there, my father was telling my sister and I about the Stanley Hotel and how Stephen King had infamously gotten snowed in there. His stay would inspire the writing of The Shining. Other random trivia. We didn't end up staying at the Stanley, but at a smaller lodging just across the street. I think it was called Discovery Lodge or something like that. Anyway, when we finally got to our destination after 18 hours of driving, we were tired and simultaneously ecstatic to be surrounded by such great scenery. We went out and explored Estes Park, got dinner and returned to our room relatively early so we could get a jump start at Rocky Mountain State Park the following day. The next morning when I woke up, I felt a burning sensation on my back, but I figured I was just sore from sitting in the car for so long. I slept in a white t-shirt and pajama pants, and when I woke up, my father alerted everyone that there was a bear sighting the night prior, and it had ransacked the outdoor garbage bins in the lodging we were staying at. Cool, huh. we all stepped out to the balcony to see the garbage cans, when my sister asked me why I had blood on my shirt. I didn't know. Logically, I walked to the bathroom to see if I had any cuts or anything, and there were three horizontal scratches on my back that I do not remember receiving. I couldn't figure out where they had come from, and I remember not having them before bed the night before. Someone would have pointed it out to me anyway, as I was shirtless before bed. It was hot. I was a teenager and my reaction to it was, whatever, though my family and I often made jokes remarking that it must be some ghost or spiritual entity that did it while I was sleeping. Or maybe it was a bear. Anyway, the rest of our vacation went normally. The cuts eventually turned into scars. To this day, people don't believe me when I recount this story, but it's only when my dad or sister asked me if I remember getting those scratches that people realize I wasn't messing around. I was wondering if any of you know anyone who had similar experiences, or if you had an experience like this within the area. I honestly have no idea how I got the cuts, and would have felt myself bleeding had they occurred prior to me sleeping. Case file number 852, written by the 007 Rat. The final words of my canine friend. First anomaly. I had a cute puppy, Goddard, a mixed boxer and Rottweiler. But the house next to mine was going through some repairs. I have a huge, in city terms, backyard, and our fences were torn due to repairs. So the pup started wandering the street in the nights. As some people are beasts, they were poisoning all strays, and my pup ate some poison. I took the pup to the vet and the outcome wasn't good. I went to work at my night shift and my best friend took care of the pup. The next day I came home and Goddard was still so-so, but I fell asleep. My friend called to see how he's doing. I went to the backyard and called him. At last he whimpers behind a big bush that was on the furthest corner. There you are, I say and tell my friend. He just whimpered, I'm going to check him out and hang up. He hides his head behind the bush, so I approach him calling, but he doesn't make another noise. I have to get some special scissors to cut some of the branches so I can fit through, and I see Goddard, and sorry about the rest of this description, but he's dead stiff, with flies over him. That was impossible in the less than two minutes it took me from I heard him whimpering to when I got to him. The second anomaly. About ten years ago, we took a trip on an airplane. I wanted to be a pilot and just admired the beautiful straight wings on all planes as well as the other airplane features. I don't know if this is important, but my son died four years ago and I wanted to harm myself in my utterly devastated mental state. I have another child though, so that kept me bound to life. Three years ago, I traveled on a plane and now all the wings are turned upward. When I came back I checked the airplane information and never were the wings straight. A couple months ago I was very sick, I didn't have much support and some friends and my boss turned against me. I was heavily depressed again, but because of my other kid I didn't do anything drastic. 
my friend, the one from the first story, and I had tickets to travel a couple weeks ago, and the wings were different again, straight, turned upwards, and some ended in V shapes, so perhaps I did die, and I'm in a new universe. Case file number 853, written by TLR1791, Life Grants Lemons and Glitches. I bought a Mayer lemon tree early in the summer, and I've been obsessed with taking care of this tree. I've always wanted my own citrus tree, and this is my first go. Well, about a month ago, it budded with two flower buds. My boyfriend and I would check the flower buds every day, keeping an eye on how big they became before they blossomed. As the weather became colder at night, I started to take the plant inside, but only for the night. One day, a couple weeks ago, it was pretty windy as we came home so I stopped to check on the tree. Now there was only one flower bud, and the second was no longer at the tip of the branch where it had been. I looked on the ground and inside the pot, I didn't see where it had maybe fallen off. My boyfriend and I looked at every tree branch, shook the branches, looked between the leaves, and nothing was there. We chalked it up to the wind making it fly off, so I brought the tree inside early and put it in front of a window. I checked the tree again that night and still no flower bud. Nothing looked shocked or stressed, so it was no big deal. That night, my boyfriend and I had some weird dreams. My boyfriend more so, as he said he had sleep paralysis and a dream in which he was saving our son from aliens that had come into the house. My dream was of aliens in front of our house trying to get in. We both rarely remember our dreams. Weird, but probably a coincidence. Once I get up, I go to take my tree outside and there's the flower bud, the second one, right there, prominently in view at the end of the branch. I pointed it out to my boyfriend and he shrugged it off. He doesn't believe in any of this stuff, but the more I think about it, the more I feel like there's something to it. Bonus file, written by Amma1989. It's all in the name. I was about 18 and I was hanging out at my friend Joanne's house with some other school friends can't quite remember how we got onto the subject, but towards the end of the evening, Joanne thought it would be fun to perform a seance. Joanne and her family were from Cape Town, South Africa, and had deep-rooted interest in the spiritual, or at least that's what Joanne made out to us. With the lights off and candles lit, we all sat at a round table, with cards fanned out around the edge. Each card had a letter of the alphabet arranged, A through Z, and a shot glass placed in the middle. Joanne starts speaking out to the spirits in Africans. I remember pulling a face and rolling my eyes. It was too dark for anyone to take offense. At the time, I was an insufferable, enlightened, atheist teen dork. <laughs> you know the type. Cringy 4chan edgelord who thinks any form of spirituality or religion is beneath them. And my superior intellect. I never wore a fedora, but I was damn close. However, what was about to happen made me question everything. It started mundane enough. A few questions were asked and the shot glass we were resting our fingers on started to move to and fro until eventually one of my friends asked the spirit if they were associated with anyone in the room. The shot glass moved directly towards me. Incredulous, I asked the spirit, if you're associated with me, then what's my mother's maiden name? My eyes fixate on the letters that spell out her maiden name, Jones, but the glass started spelling out something different. First the glass went to T, then H, then O. I thought then it was bullcrap as it was completely wrong. Then I was struck by a horrific realization. When my mom was six months old, her biological father died of a heart attack and a year after that, she took her stepfather's name. I completely forgot this in the moment as I was expecting the glass to read out the maiden name she had for the majority of her life, but was actually spelling out her original maiden name of Thompson. It was a fact so trivial that I barely remembered it myself. It was something never talked about even within my family as it happened so long ago. It would be hard to believe that any of my friends would know this esoteric piece of my family's history that occurred 20 years before I was even born. But nonetheless, somehow, it was being spelled out in front of my very eyes. Thompson. My school friends and I wouldn't talk about anything deeper than video games and girls at that age. Yet there's no way I ever mentioned this to any of them. 
It's not like any of my pot-smoking loser friends had a copy of my mom's birth certificate, and none of them had ever met anyone else in my family. There was literally no way anyone could have known this. Before I could contemplate this for too long, or ask any other questions to my ghostly associate, Joanne's mom came into the room and turns the lights on, and shouts something like, Bloody hell, Joanne, stop messing around with this silly crap, and put a definite stop to the proceedings. Of course, at the time, I played it off as a prank, but the more I think of it, the more my mind wanders. Did something actually paranormal happen that night? I know it's nothing dramatic or that exciting. I didn't see an apparition or a cryptid, but this experience is actually true, and something to this day I can't explain. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Case file number 854, written by Brunch Babadook, from Disorder Emerges a Glitch in the Matrix. This isn't a really crazy story, but I'm still kind of besides myself. I work in a real estate office that's open 7 days a week, so I'm here now on a Sunday. It's a really tidy place usually, including my desk, which I always keep pretty clear, and since I'm basically the office administrator, I know where everything is, down to the scuffs in the shelf under the thing that holds all the envelopes in the supply room. I came in this morning to open up and the whole office was in total disarray. Been working here for over a year and I've never seen it so tossed around. So I started putting things back where they belong before I even sat down. The alarm had been set like usual when I came in, so unless someone was here after we closed yesterday or just carpet bombed the place at some point before they left, I have no other explanation for why it was so disorganized. Since it's a Sunday morning, I never see anyone until noon at the earliest, and the real estate market in this area is slow during this time of year, so lately I've been alone all day for the last several Sundays. There was no one in the building when I arrived. If there had been, the alarm would have gone off. The whole place was dark when I came in, and it's not a large space. I definitely would have known if someone else was here. When I finally arrived at my desk, my mouse and the mouse pad were both missing. The keyboard was there, some documents had been moved, but they were nearby so I could account for them. My mouse is wireless, there's just no reason for it to be gone along with the mouse pad. I was super frustrated and looked around on my coworker's messy desk, on the floor, maybe it got pushed aside for some reason, nowhere to be found. At this point, I'm not thinking this is some unexplainable phenomena, just some other thing that ended up totally displaced. I ended up stealing a mouse from a computer that is hardly ever used. I have things to do so I didn't want to dedicate much time to hunting for missing mouse and mouse pads. When I went back to my desk, both the mouse and the mouse pad were in the place they always are, to the right of the keyboard. I even plugged in the mouse I had stolen, not even looking at my desk beforehand because I was so sure my mouse wasn't there, because it wasn't. Then I looked up and was astonished to find them both there. I guess this could just be a case of I didn't have my coffee yet, but I swear my mouse and mouse pad weren't there on my desk until I returned. Creepy file number 68, written by Chrissy510. My dog, Cosmo, the champion defender. A few years back, I was living with my aunt and uncle after moving to a new state. They had just moved into a new home in a new sub-development. In this area, door-to-door -door salesmen swarm new developments and new builds for water softeners, cleaning supplies, solar panels, generators, and the Kirby vacuum people. They wander the neighborhood all day, knocking on doors, but are usually gone by around 5 p.m. This particular evening, I was home alone with my dog, a mutt who was mostly black lab and an unknown mixture. He was roughly the size and weight of a full-breed Labrador, but he had a stockier build and long, wiry hair. He was a gentle, sweet baby who was upset if someone spoke harshly to him. I'd never known him to be threatening to anyone. My aunt and uncle were out celebrating their anniversary. This time of year, the days were getting longer and we would have full dark by around 8pm. It was about 7pm now and starting to get dusky when someone rang the doorbell and knocked on the door. The door was one of those with a thick glass oval window and I could see the door and who was there from the kitchen. I was just going to ignore them but unfortunately they could see me and continued to knock so I went to answer the door. 
my dog followed me, but stood off to the side in the shadows of the dining room. The person at the door was a young man about college-aged, dressed in a collared shirt and tie and khakis, looked a bit like a Mormon missionary but with style. He was thin and about my height, 5'8", 5'9". I figured he was a salesman of some sort, but thought it was odd he was out this late in the day. I thought I'd open the door a crack, tell him I'm not interested, then lock the door. I open the door a few inches to speak through, and he starts his spiel about Kirby vacuum cleaners, and he wants to come in and give a demo. It's not my house. I know once they get in, they aren't leaving without selling something, and have no need for an overpriced vacuum, and don't have a thousand dollars to spend anyway. I tell him, no thank you, I'm not interested, and begin to close the door when he puts his foot between the door and the door jam and throws his hands up to stop the door from closing. This is when I think, what the hell, and hear a vicious growling behind me and to my right, and then a loud deep bark bark bark, as my dog lunges for the door. I grab his collar to keep him from going out the door. The guy's mouth drops open, his eyes get really wide and he looks like he's ready to pass out or pee himself as he jumps back from the door and backs away saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, wrong house, wrong house and then turns and runs to the end of the driveway where a car with three men in it pulls up to get him and they speed off, tires squealing. I told my aunt and uncle about it when they got home and we told a few neighbors so they could keep an eye out for any unusual behavior. It is possible they were a team of Kirby salesmen. They do travel in teams of four usually and follow the door knockers in the car with the vacuum, but I was suspicious because it was late in the day for them to be knocking on doors and it was a team of four men. Usually they have a team with two or more women in the group because they are knocking on doors at a time of day when women are going to be home alone and unlikely to let strange men in. So was this a team of Kirby salesmen working late to meet quotas or a team of home invaders posing as such? I don't know, but Cosmo wasn't going to take chances. Case file number 855, written by Abnormal Normal. When reality was slowed to 0.5 speed, my partner and I were having dinner at a decently respectable restaurant in New York City. Won't give the exact name, but there are blue umbrellas involved. If you know it, you know it. Anyhow, the dinner is going well. We weren't together that long at this point. This event happened a few years ago before the notable world event. I was very focused because my intention was to propose to her after dinner was served, even though we had only been together for a few months. I know it's hasty, but I knew she was the one. I had been to the restaurant before and the food was exceptional, maybe the best wild striped bass I've ever eaten. The only downside is the wait is long, still worth it. So we're sitting at the table, discussing our future together, life plans. Marriage had never been broached before, but it wasn't hard to tell that it was on both of our minds. Spoiler alert, we did end up getting married, still together now, very happy. She revealed later on that she was 99% certain I was going to propose to her that night and was surprised when I didn't. We'll get to that. Here's the glitch. Dinner was finally being served and as the waitress is walking away, time doesn't stop but it's slowed down, notably so. I'd have to guess by a factor of 50% at the very least. It persisted for a while, hard to put a time frame on it exactly because of the distortion but for a minute of real time seems about right. I was sitting there, feeling totally normal, but observing reality in slow motion, each step of the waitress heading back inside, my partner slowly cutting her bass and then squeezing some lemon on it. Then as suddenly as this weirdness started, it all ended, swirled back into normal time and nothing like this has ever happened again. I never told anyone. My partner was confused because she tried talking to me, but it was hard to even understand her as her voice sounded like Darth Vader to me. I just said that I was feeling a little stressed. I ended up not proposing to her that night because of this. I did it later in Central Park instead. Was the universe giving me a warning not to propose then? Also, I know that stress can trigger adrenaline release, and I know that adrenaline can alter time perception a bit for sure, increasing reaction time. I've played a lot of football over my life and I've entered that zone, the flow, where things appear to happen slower, but this was an extraordinarily extreme version of that. 
Case file number 856, written by Butterbeer. The Pulsating Reality I'm an intuitive person, always have been since I was a kid. I'm also the outgoing type, as my friends describe anyways. I like being the center of attention. As a result of that, I tend to have large groups of people around in my place just to hang out. Oddly, I don't like drinking alcohol. Maybe the only extrovert alive who doesn't partake of that distilled curse. I say that so everyone understands I was entirely sober at the time of this glitch. It was an evening party, had all of the accoutrements prepared. Chips, dip, salsa, even made deviled eggs because I'm a fancy pants like that now, at the ripe old age of 26. We're in the living room just chatting away, had some music on but not eardrum popping loud, just a little bit of ambience to set the tone. I'm talking to my close friend, we'll call her M, and in the corner of my eye I could see the TV, only the TV was warped. The best way I can describe it is curved or bent, yet the geometry still fit the volume of space it was taking up. My brain couldn't process it and I felt lightheaded. So at this point, most people would think, oh, medical issues must be, right? I have tumors all over my brain. Here's why it's so strange. Other people in this party also witnessed something similar. Although none of them described it as I did, they didn't say they felt lightheaded or that the TV looked bent or curved, just blurred at the edges for a few seconds. Lowered resolution is how one of my gamer friends described it. So what on earth happened? Something in the environment here like a gas leak that affected our mental states? Maybe. But there was no gas leak in the area reported and I'm still alive. Didn't smell anything. And this whole ordeal lasted seconds and never happened again. This was weeks ago. We all talked about this right after but most of my friends dismissed it quickly as some random anomaly that couldn't be explained. Let's say they're not really into questioning things deeply. More fun to let loose and think about fornication and food, I guess. Mysteries of the universe be damned. Case file number 857, written by Anonymous. For one day, no one existed. This is one of these events that when you write it down or even replay it in your own mind, it seems like it shouldn't be real. I don't blame anyone who can't believe this because frankly, I don't buy it myself. Yet the memories are there. I live in a sizable city. Woke up one morning, <laughs> okay, afternoon. I have one roommate, felt normal if groggy, but then that's normal for me as I slept after a late night gaming session. Morning routine, I wake up, check my emails, then take a shower and brew up a coffee, which is quick. I use one of those arrow presses. Nothing abnormal besides my roommate not being around. He works weekdays, this was Sunday. He didn't go out much on the weekends but I figured he went to get lunch or something like that. Now I'm showered, coffee in hand, heading back to my PC to scroll through Twitter. First thing I realized was that the internet was down. Emails didn't load before, but in my groggy state, I didn't really care or think about it. Down on my cell too, no data. If the internet is down on one's phone, unless there's a natural disaster, that's usually a really bad sign. I figured something major might have happened like an attack on the country but everything was quiet, no storms or anything either. Took a look out of the window and saw nothing, but I actually mean nothing, or rather no one. Like I mentioned, I live in a decent sized city, in an apartment complex with a window overlooking a street. Not an arterial boulevard or anything like that, but to see no one was very odd at midday on a bright shiny afternoon. At this point, my heart's beating faster. All that's racing through my mind now is something super serious happened. I put my shoes on and went outside to check. There's nothing. It was so quiet, the most disturbing quietness I've ever experienced. Not a soul in sight. No one walking, no one in cars, no businesses around this residential road. So I ran down towards the main strip and still no one. The entire city seemed to be dead. There was electricity though, so I don't know what the hell is going on. I have no radio, no data on my cell phone, no calls going through, no internet. So all I could do is roam the city looking for anyone, which is what I did, all day. The wind was blowing, the sun is shining normally, sun moved across the sky, the day progressed, time progressed. Then it got dark, street lights came on as they usually would. It's just that not another human existed, 
and I couldn't understand why. I was panicking so much I felt sick beyond words, like I was pulled into a waking nightmare of purgatory. Did I die? Is this my hell? Well, I never got any answers. I eventually passed out, probably from exhaustion or dehydration or just sheer stress. I wasn't home, I was in the middle of downtown in my city when I went out. Then I awoke on the sidewalk, at 6.03am. Phone still had battery, which is why I remember the time exactly, and I could hear some bustling before I opened my eyes. Couple cars on the road, everything was normal again, data back on my phone. So I went back home. Roommate was already wondering where the hell I had been. He had tried to call me, tried to message me on Facebook Messenger, but nothing went through. He had checked my room and saw a cold cup of coffee, but no me anywhere. I didn't dare tell him what happened because it's insane. Did I go insane? Was I given a glimpse of hell? What the freaking duck happened? Case file number 858, written by It's your girl, Harley. The glitch that saved my life. Hey, so I recognize that this is gonna sound crazy, but I had the most bizarre experience. My life has been very tumultuous for the past few months. My marriage has been falling apart, and once separated, I started seeing this guy who decided that I wasn't worth the trouble. Even after reaching out, he continued to ghost me. I was feeling sufficiently triggered and had already attempted to harm myself. So I went on a walk, planned on it being my last. I was going to go and walk to the river that was near my house. I started off in the neighborhood facing the river. There was a chance to cross a road called Fort Meg's Road. I did. It led into another neighborhood. I continued straight, then turned left. At this point, I should have been perpendicular with the road leading to the river. Then I turned right, then left. Still, perpendicular to the river road. I continued to walk forward, but the road didn't look familiar. In fact, it didn't look like any road I'd ever seen in my city, ever. There was a ravine to my right, with an up and down bamboo fence. Houses on my left and right, lights. But technically, according to my neighborhood map, I should have been in the middle of a cemetery. I didn't pay attention, I just kept going forward. It felt like it went on forever. Then, all of a sudden, I noticed a familiar bend in the road. But it didn't make sense, because for all intents and purposes, that bend should have been several roads over and the opposite facing direction. I freaked out. I was headed home. It made me think. I wasn't planning on going home, really. I was going to jump. Something turned me home. I immediately called my mom because I was so freaked out. I still am. Obviously, there are things I still need to do. I have been in a lot of therapy since all of this, and I'm in a much better place. I, like a lot of you suggested, look back on my feelings at that time and know that they were temporary storms that didn't deserve a permanent solution. Though I've had some rough patches since then, I love my family way too much. My dad just lost both of his parents to the virus this winter, so I would not want to add to his heartache. Secondly, for the one person that accused me of not being there for my husband through thick and thin, we were having problems for about a year and a half, and he hit me on multiple occasions. I am not perfect and I did a lot of wrong in my relationship, but the night that he punched me was when we decided to separate, and it was the period after that when I was seeing that other person. I do think I'm still here to be there for other people. That's been something that's come up a lot. As far as moving into a different reality, I'm not sure. I do feel off sometimes, but also disassociate, so I know that's possibly why. Also about possibly crossing over and coming back, maybe. I'm not sure. All I know is that I'm trying to live my life in these hard times one day at a time. Case file number 859, written by... Matrix O. My mom left a message she never remembers. Back in 2013, I'm home from college at a family reunion at a lake with my parents. Early on in the day, my dad falls in the lake with his phone in his pocket, and this is back when phones weren't water resistant, so none of the buttons were working and the screen isn't showing anything. Without any rice around, we just put it in my mom's purse. Several hours later, we get in the car ready to leave and we start hearing something coming from my mom's purse. We pull out my dad's phone, and it's a message being played on a loop. Hey, this is my mom's name. I'm just calling to tell you that we're at the Hummingbird Festival. 
There was nothing inherently creepy about what was said in the voice message, pretty basic. Except for the fact that none of us, including my mom, had ever heard of this hummingbird festival. The voice was unmistakably my mom's voice, introducing herself as my mom, first and last name. We couldn't get the message to stop playing until it stopped on its own after about a half hour. The phone never worked after that. We have no rational explanation for what happened and have just accepted that it was some glitch in reality. Case file number 860, written by Skylover15. Daughter Sippy Cup, sewn into the couch. Me, my husband, and our daughter went to have a mini vacation at my mom's house who lives almost three hours away from us. We spend the day there and all is well until it gets to dinner time. I take my daughter's sippy cup, it's a kind with a sassy saying and the only one of its kind that we had, and hand it over to my husband so he can have it while he watches our daughter. Meanwhile, I'm grocery shopping with my mom. We get back to her house and my daughter starts saying she wants juice. I asked my husband where the sippy cup was and he said he set it down on the table but it's gone. We looked everywhere and it completely disappeared. Defeated, I go back to the store and buy her another one. We finished the vacation without incident. About three to four months after coming back home, I noticed a hard bulge in my couch. It's not like something had fallen in there, it looked as if it was placed there while it was made. I have never noticed this before and curiosity gets the better of me, so I cut open the couch. It was my daughter's sippy cup that disappeared from my mom's house several months ago. I've never been able to explain this one away and so chalk it up to being a glitch. Bonus file, written by Flashy Emergency 702, The Woman with Black Eyes. I live in Pennsylvania, and there's this creepy house called Raymer's Hollow, where a murder took place in 1928. One afternoon, I was hanging out with two of my friends, and we pretty much weren't doing anything. This was like four years ago, and we we're bored teenagers. So I mentioned checking out that house, and they never heard about it. So once they heard the backstory about it, they were down to visit. When we got there, it was pretty light out still. It was about an hour away from us. We looked around and imagined where everything took place and just talked about the history of it. If you're from Pennsylvania and know this place, you know they have had security over the years. So we were being respectful and just admiring the property. Once we decided to leave, my friend backed out and went the wrong way. He ended up coming up to a dead end and had to back up into someone's driveway. I was in the back seat and had my head looking out the back window to make sure he was all good. And out of nowhere, I saw this woman, long black hair, piercing black eyes and a white dress, staring at me and keeping eye contact in the doorway of this house. I turned around freaking out, with tears in my eyes. I looked back and there was no one there. I had to look away for only two seconds. My friend, who was backing up, told me he didn't see anything. My other friend was looking down at his phone, so he clearly didn't see anything. I somehow was the only one who witnessed her. I have never felt fear like that before. The way she was looking at me will never leave my mind. I don't know if I just saw a creepy woman or I saw something paranormal. Whatever it was still haunts me to this day after years. Case file number 861. Written by Avengion 619 The Mysterious Case of a Vanishing Passenger Last night, I was online picking up people throughout the night for my rideshare gig, all the way to the early morning. One particular ride, I picked up two ladies. I greet the women and they reply and we alternate asking how the night has been and so on. The passenger directly behind me mentioned she just got out of a toxic relationship and had a few drinks, but she does not drink that often so she could not keep up with her friends. I respond and wish her well. Her friend chimes in and she thanks me. I can make out both silhouettes of the ladies in my rear view mirror, but I can clearly see the passenger behind me through my side view mirror and because of outside lighting from the street lights. The two passengers are making indistinguishable conversation. I also have my stereo playing in only the front speakers to give passengers that do not want to chat a little bit more privacy and quiet while I still get music to get me through long drives over dark nights. 
I make a follow-up question and get no response, so I leave the ladies to their mumbling conversation. I continue to drive and the map is acting weird, to which I speak up and ask if I follow left or right up ahead because the navigation is showing contradictions. Again I get no response and at this point their conversation had stopped, which I assume they were both passed out or something. Finally, we get to the destination and I say, Here we are ladies, home and safe, with a bit of a volume in case they have been passed out. Both voices thank me and the rear driver's side door is opened and the ladies exit and thank me as well as wish me a good night. I wait for the ladies to clear the vehicle and I only see one in sight who proceeds to walk in front of my vehicle towards her apartment that has a street driveway parking with a cement ramp off the sidewalk into the street. There was nothing else within 40 to 50 feet all around us as it was about 3 a.m. in a residential area, so I was just barely to the right side of the road. In a nutshell, I saw two women enter my car, I conversed in a group with two women with different voices, different tones, I could sense two other bodies sitting behind me, even the weight of two bodies shifting when making a turn. And then at the destination, there was only one passenger. Creepy file number 69, written by I am Lasagne, Unwanted Visitors. We moved into a suburban house in the southern US a few years back. When the pandemic hit, I found myself working remotely. It was great since I spent more time with my family and didn't have to spend two hours in traffic each day. However, being home a majority of my week exposed me and my family to a variety of strange encounters that have only escalated throughout the years. Early in the world event, we got a knock on the door mid-morning. I was in the meeting, but I heard my partner open the door. I could tell by the voice it was our next door neighbor, an older woman who lived alone. She was in the process of moving and had stopped by every day or so to give us a few odds and ends that she didn't want to take with her. However, within seconds, my partner called my name with a worried tone. I excuse myself from the meeting and head over to our landing which is open to the front door below. Both my partner and the neighbor look slightly panicked. Neighbor says there's a strange man sitting on our back wall. What do we do? For context, my house is on a green belt. There's about 500 yards of woods and field until you had a four lane road and a small shopping plaza. Our back wall is smooth, concrete and about 6.5 feet high. The ground on the green belt side is sloped which ends up making the wall about 7 feet high in effect on the green belt side. A taller person with considerable effort could probably scale it. I initially think there's no way someone is up on the wall right now. But sure enough, as I run downstairs and look through the backsliding glass door, there's a middle-aged man smoking a cigarette with both feet hanging onto my yard. He's kind of lazily staring at the back of mine and my neighbor's houses. My adrenaline starts to kick in. My kid's swing set and toys are in the backyard. I hate confrontation, but I seem to be automatically moving to open the back door. My partner asks what I'm doing. I open the door and step on onto the porch and start walking across the yard. As I get closer, I can tell the guy is bugging out and probably homeless. He notices me when I get about six feet from him. I'm trying to stay calm and not escalate. Hey man, what are you doing up here? He gestures around him, enjoying the view. I, I interrupt. Yeah, you gotta get down and go somewhere else. He just kind of stares at me and swings a leg over the other side but stays put. Please get the hell off my property, I say more forcefully this time, trying to hide any wavering in my voice. Yeah, yeah, okay. He slides the other leg around and jumps down, disappearing from view. Never saw this person again, thankfully. A few months later I'm working from home. My partner and kid are gone, so I'm alone. There's a knock at the door. Usually I ignore them unless I'm expecting someone. Most of the time it's either Amazon or a solicitor. They usually knock once and then take off. However, this person leans onto the doorbell and knocks again. Annoyed, I leave the office to go see who it is. I make my way to the door and I can hear a muffled conversation taking place on the other end before I can look through the people. I look and see four people all dressed like they're heading to a business lunch. 
two men in their mid-twenties, an older man and a young woman towards the back that couldn't have been more than twenty, maybe twenty-one. I slowly open the door out of curiosity, and the older man immediately gets uncomfortably close and starts speaking forcefully in a language I don't understand. It takes my brain a moment to catch up. Uh, I can't understand, I start to say. He pauses and asks in English, you can't speak Russian. No. Then there's a long moment where we kind of stare at each other. He looks like he doesn't believe me, glaring, where is the nearest Russian church? He asks, while the other stands silently behind him. I have no clue. I genuinely have no idea if such a thing exists in the southern US. He thanks me and then they all walk back to their nondescript sedan and take off. They did not stop at any other houses on the street. Case file number 862, written by Enigma Nix, driving a loop that doesn't exist. My brother was picking me up from the airport. I used to fly a few times a year from London to visit my parents and he would usually be the one to pick me up. This time, he picks me up again. We're driving on the highway. It's a straight four lane highway. You pass three big cities before reaching my town. You don't drive through the cities. It's a freeway circuit and there's absolutely nowhere you can turn as the highway has barriers on both sides and in the middle. You only drive off the highway just a few miles before reaching my town. So we're driving and as we're approaching the third city, which is on the left side of the highway, I called my mom saying where we were and that I'd be home in about 15 minutes. Literally two minutes later, we're seeing a big sign, airport, and we're both like, what the hell? My brother had to stop on the side to get out and light a cigarette, totally freaked out and going, what the hell just happened? It almost seemed like someone had just picked up our car, turned it backwards and we drove all the way back until reaching the airport again. We drove back home totally shaken and saw the whole scenery for a second time, trying to figure out if there was a slight possibility to turn off the highway somewhere, but there wasn't. The whole journey was spooky as hell and the weird thing was we only gained like 10 extra minutes off the journey, basically going back and forth two times. Case file number 863, written by Dear Ghouls. The notes that are written into space-time. I really cannot for the life of me figure this one out. Every now and then, I house-sit for my sister. She has a pretty needy old dog, and I'm one of the people she trusts to watch him. I'm house-sitting currently, and the last time I was at her place house-sitting was August. Back in August, she had left cute sticky notes all over the house. One of them had been on the fridge and said, Dear Ghouls, thank you so much for all the help. We love you so much, K.O. and Sis. And there was another that she put on a bottle of wine that said, Drink me. I threw the notes away back in August. Fast forward to two nights ago. I'm sitting at the bar with some friends, and one of them reaches down and goes, Hey, I think this is yours. And it's one of the two notes. They had just been sitting on the floor under my chair at the bar. I have no idea how they got there. Some people suggested I'd put them in my pocket or purse and forgot that they fell out. But both my jacket and purse I'm currently using have been in storage at my mom's until last week when it got cold. I even called my sister and asked her if she had saved the notes from last time or written new ones. She said no, of course she didn't. I'm gonna be scratching my head over this one until the day I die. Case file number 864, written by Anonymous. When your wealth is linked to the universe. An extremely bizarre incident occurred with my credit card twice during these past few months. For background, I'm an expat living in Israel, but I have a US credit card that I use here regularly, and an Israeli debit card with a completely separate Israeli bank. So here's a story. A few months ago, I went to a pharmacy to buy some prescription meds and paid with my Israeli debit card. It wasn't a tap to pay, I had to insert the card into the chip reader. Despite paying with my Israeli card, I got a real-time notification that my American credit card was charged for the transaction. I checked my statement and it was indeed charged, but the Israeli card I used was not charged. I told myself that I must have accidentally held both cards stacked on top of each other and inserted them into the chip reader together, and I brushed it off. 
Today, I went to a different pharmacy, different company, and again, went to pay for the transaction with my Israeli card. It was also a chip reader where you insert the card, not a tap to pay system. Again, I received a real time notification for the transaction on my American credit card. This time I thought, huh, hold up again? Let me see if I accidentally grabbed both cards and inserted them both. I looked at my gold Israeli debit card, as it was inside the chip reader device. Then I looked over and saw my silver American card tucked away in my wallet, at least three feet away from the card reader. When I saw my American card sitting in my wallet, the hairs on my neck stood up. The American card was charged again and the Israeli card was not. I was sure I only used the Israeli card this time. What the literal hell? I will reiterate that this was not tap to pay and even if it had been, my American card was three feet away from the device sitting in my wallet and it was charged after I inserted my Israeli card. I'm 100% certain of what happened. I double checked like three times to confirm and the cards are completely different colors so it was very clear to confirm. I called my American bank to ask if it's possible for my Israeli bank to somehow hack my card or link it to my Israeli account without my consent. It sounded so bizarre to them that three customer service representatives hung up on me in a row. I'm no tech expert, but it seems impossible. These are two completely different financial institutions in different countries. Has something like this happened to anyone else here? Obligatory disclosure. I do not take drugs, not even marijuana and have no history of schizophrenia or delusions. I was not sleep deprived, oxygen deprived or dehydrated during these incidents and the records still exist as to what happened. Bonus file, written by Marshall Dill 26, The Working Man Ghost. Ever since I was a kid, I've always had a fascination with the paranormal. I'm not sure how to word this, but I'll do my best. Anything paranormal caught my interest but I also had a healthy amount of skepticism. This event made me a believer though. One of my best friends had moved into a new place with his fiance. I came over after they had been there for a few weeks and we stood in his driveway just bullcrapping. From his driveway, you can see into the hall and all the way down to the bedroom. I looked over and saw a man in a navy plumber's outfit walk into his bedroom. I looked over to him and asked if he was having work done. He looked very confused and said no. I was like, dude, I just saw a guy in a blue. Before I could finish my sentence, his fiance butted in. In a freaking blue jumpsuit, I told you. Turns out she had seen the same guy a few days prior and my friend just laughed it off. We did some digging and sure enough, the guy that used to live there was one of the local plumbers. He died in the house. Case file number 865, written by Billy Vass Barker Warley. Riding the Wave of Time First Incident Back in the early 80s, I was looking at an apartment. I had just looked at the empty living room, but quickly popped my head back in and out of the doorway on a whim. In that brief moment, I saw a room full of furniture. I looked again and it was empty. I ended up renting and quite some time later, I walked into the living room and realized the furniture I had seen was my own. None of which I had at the time, as I slowly gathered it over a period of many months. The second incident. Shortly after I realized I saw my own furniture that day, I was sitting in the living room, same apartment, after a hard third shift, drinking a rum and coke while watching Popeye cartoons, when I heard what sounded like a large dog walking in the kitchen. The sound came to the living room, stopped for a good long moment, then resumed, walking back through the kitchen and suddenly stopping again. I got up and looked, feeling very weirded out by the noise, but nothing. I sat down to finish my drink, and a few minutes later I saw someone vaguely familiar dart their head around the doorframe and immediately pull it back. I yelped and jumped up, running into the kitchen, finding no one again. All doors and windows locked and chained, and no one hiding in a closet or under a bed. I chalked it up to alcohol and exhaustion. Several months later, a friend from work brought their dog over, which they had just got from their parents. I didn't even know they had a dog. It walked in and around the kitchen, then went into the living room for several seconds before re-entering the kitchen and walking out the back door. These were the exact same sounds I had heard months earlier, but experienced from the opposite side of the encounter. It then hit me. The face I saw at the doorway was my own. 
Since I was in my very early 20s, I chalked it up to possibly becoming unanchored in time. Case file number 866, written by Dead But Dreaming 13. No smoking. Almost two years ago, my wife and I took an eight hour road trip to the desert to celebrate my birthday. Both of us were heavy smokers, and as a birthday gift to myself, I decided to quit. She wasn't as stoked as I was, but since it was my birthday trip, she agreed to let me hog the stereo on my way home so I could listen to an audiobook called Easy Way to Quit Smoking by Alan Carr. The thing about this book is that the reader is encouraged to smoke while they read, or in my case listen to, the book, and only decide if they want to quit after they have finished. So we're driving and smoking and listening to this book while driving through the mountains of northern Arizona when we both hear a loud bang at the same time. I feel something hit my chest followed by my left pectoral muscle getting really cold. I look down and see a puff of smoke coming from the left pocket of the flannel shirt I was wearing at the time. I was 100% sure I had been shot, so I instinctively put my hand under the shirt expecting to feel a bloody hole. But there was nothing there, just a cold patch of skin. So I felt around in the pocket of my shirt and pulled out a bunch of sharp plastic pieces. It took a few seconds to make sense of what had happened. The lighter I was carrying in that pocket had for no apparent reason exploded. The cold feeling came from the butane escaping, which I had mistaken for smoke. I had smoked for over 20 years and had never experienced the lighter spontaneously combust like that. My wife had never experienced it either and the fact that it happened while listening to a book about not smoking anymore at the exact second I was thinking about lighting up another one makes the whole thing feel a little more like a miracle. Before you ask, this wasn't a high quality disposable lighter, like a Bic. This was one of those transparent plastic ones you buy for 89 cents at the gas station, and I had probably used it to open several beers that weekend, so its structural integrity could have been questionable. Still, it's the timing that was pretty incredible. Also, while we continued to smoke for the rest of the drive, we finished the book about the same time we rolled into our driveway, and neither of us have had a cigarette since. Case file number 867, written by Pirates of the Butt. Audio and visuals desynchronize in real life. Happened a few months ago and I've been meaning to post about it here since then, but I'm an expert at procrastination. I was driving in the rain for an extended period of time with the windshield wipers on at a constant speed. There's a distinct sound for when they're going up, as well as a kind of clunk sound when they change direction. Well, after a while, I noticed that the sound was starting to kind of lag behind what I was seeing, and the longer I left them, the more noticeable it got. I'd estimate the desynchronization got up to half a second at one point, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a pretty noticeable delay when it's between seeing something make a sound and actually hearing the sound. Basically the kind of delay you would expect from something 500 feet away, but in my case it was like 2 or 3 feet away, so like 0.002 seconds. Not something a human is going to be able to pick up on. The sound is coming from a mechanical source, not a speaker somewhere in the vehicle there for the purpose of making wiper sounds like some electric vehicles have speakers to replicate engine sounds. No glitch in any part of the vehicle could cause an auditory desynchronization like that. This is more like something I would expect to find in a GTA type game, probably caused by the animation for wipers and the sound being coded to start at the same time and repeat until the wipers turn off, but the audio sometimes lags for a frame before repeating, which causes desynchronization after a long enough time. Personally I would just code the animation to repeat and the sound to play every time the animation starts instead of having it repeat independently and hope the time syncs up correctly, but that's besides the point. Finding that in a game would be one thing, but in real life? I don't know how else to explain that other than a glitch in reality itself. Case file number 868, written by Confused Confuzzled. Classic Quantum Immortality. Okay, so bear with me here. My husband and I were traveling back, a six hour drive, from visiting family. I was driving. I kept having a very vivid flash of a place pop into my head where an 18-wheeler loses control and we have a head-on collision. In this flash image, I see it coming, can't move out of the way and just look at my husband and say, baby, I love you. To note, I am a very comfortable driver. 
This started pretty much as soon as we hit the road. We reach an intersection maybe two to three hours into the drive, and I recognize it from the image that popped into my head earlier. Exactly where that image showed the trailer truck hitting us head on, I felt that the car suddenly jumped. Like, as if I had just lost control, I felt a bit woozy and it felt like the car jerked forward. No accident happened, but it made me wonder. A friend once mentioned the possibility of dying suddenly and waking up, so to speak, as if nothing had happened. Like jumping into the next dimension. That experience on the road was weird. My husband noticed nothing. He insisted the car never jerked, nothing felt off to him, it was a normal drive. So did we dimensionally travel after a head-on collision into an exact or almost exact replica of our dimension? Bonus file, written by Booze and Booze, to Tyler, the best friend in the multiverse. I'm sure a lot of you reading this can relate to losing someone. I've definitely endured quite a bit of loss throughout my life, though this specific one hit harder than the ones before and has taken a while to come to terms with. In 2019, I received a phone call late at night from a close friend of mine. Levi wasn't the type to call, he was more of a texter. So when I saw his name flashing on my cell phone at 2am, I knew it couldn't be good. I picked up the phone, walked out of my bedroom, and went into the next room to take the call so I wouldn't wake up my girlfriend and our newborn. I was told within the first 20 seconds of the call there had been an accident and our friend Tyler was gone. I went from half asleep to wide awake in a split second. What? Gone? What the hell does that even mean, Levi? I got angry, I got pissed because I didn't believe him until he told me again that Tyler was gone. There was an accident when he was driving and he died. He told me himself and a few others of a friend group who were all at his house. He told me I could come over if I wanted to. After we got off the phone, I fell to the floor. I was in complete shock and disbelief. There's no way that this is happening. This isn't real. A few moments later, I went back into my bedroom, picked up my four-month-old sleeping son, walked downstairs to sit in our recliner and just bawled my eyes out for hours. Tyler had been texting me that night. He asked me what I was up to around 9 or 10. Myself and my girlfriend were just on the couch playing Overcooked on the Switch. I had asked him the same about what he was doing. He responded that he was drunk, and I assumed he was just at his house or someone else's. He was a very social dude and loved to be out and about drinking with people. He was loved by many and a friend to all. I had removed myself mostly from that lifestyle because of getting into a serious relationship and having my first child. I had fallen asleep while we were messaging back and forth and his last message read, You winning? I never thought to ask where he was or if he needed a ride. He wrecked his truck on the way home from the bar that night, just an hour or so after that last message was sent to my phone. The guilt of not asking him if he was okay and if he needed a ride or anything, just freaking assuming he was good. That guilt took over my life and consumed me to the point where I was now drinking heavily myself on a regular basis. Whiskey every single night, blacking out to numb the pain and guilt. I almost lost my job. I stopped taking care of myself. Most importantly, I stopped being a good partner and father. My girlfriend at one point had had her car packed with all her belongings and my son's, telling me to say goodbye to him as I was wasted sitting in my garage. Somehow, I was fortunate enough that she ended up staying and I slowly got my crap together. Fast forward to a few years later. Throughout this time, I would occasionally talk to Tyler, whether that be in my head silently or even out loud at times when I was alone, asking him to please tell me you're okay. Somehow, find a way, please. I had come to terms with his death, but I didn't have that closure and reassurance still, if that makes any sense. I had a few dreams where I thought he was there, but it felt cloudy and I would forget a lot if not all of the details of said dream. However, a few months back I had another dream, one so real, so vivid about him. This is strange and hard to explain, but we are all giant nerds coupled with heavy levels of sarcasm within my friend group. Stupid, childish, immature, sarcastic humor is the norm. So when my dream started off with me and Tyler walking into a bathroom together and then both walking up to a toilet and seeing a huge log, we both started yelling, ooh, and dying of laughter. I know it's weird, but it was just us. 
Then all of a sudden, the back of the wall behind the toilet opened up like a door. The bathroom completely disappeared in front of us. The most amazingly beautiful scenery lay before me. Huge mountains, lush green grass, and gorgeous blue skies. Picture that first time in Breath of the Wild when Link walks up to the edge of the mountain and you get that first look of how beautiful that world was. Tyler turned to me and didn't say a word, but just looked at me. I knew instantly, without him even speaking, that he had to leave, go back into this place, and that I couldn't follow him. You don't have to go, man. Please don't. Stay here for a little longer. I was pleading with him. He still said nothing, just smiled and walked into that world and kept eye contact with me as the door closed back up. The dream immediately faded to black and I woke up. Tyler was 27 when he left us. He was a great friend. We spent so much time together over the years, good times far outweighing the bad, and I could spend hours telling stories about the stupid crap we got into and somehow got out of. This is the first time I've told this story. I believe he visited me that last time to tell me he's okay. Tyler, I love you, man. I miss you every single freaking day. I cannot wait till we meet again, my friend. Case file number 869, written by J. Harris 666, The Mysterious Echo of Time. Had a very interesting morning on Wednesday, November 23rd. I usually get in the shower about 6 a.m., so I can be out the door on my way to work by 6.45. I lost track of time while working on a photo project and realized I was running late at 6.45 when I looked at the time on my computer, so I immediately went to the bathroom and began getting ready. I shaved my face and head, did my business, showered, dried off, and brushed my teeth. I stepped out of the bathroom and looked at the clock on the stove, and to my shock, it read 6.45. I thought that's odd, it was 6.45 when I started my morning routine. So then I checked the clock on my TV, my computer, and my cell phone, and they all said the same thing, 6.45. There's no way I did all that I did that morning in less than 60 seconds, not possible. Time stopped for about 25 minutes. The second part of this happened while I was at work the same morning. I had a lengthy meeting in the morning full of slides, videos, tables, and graphs. The meeting itself was four hours. While sitting in the meeting, there was one part of the presentation that happened twice, almost like a déjà vu moment. We were discussing a specific slide on PowerPoint, and then moved to the next part of the presentation. But the next part of the presentation was exactly what we just discussed. He, my boss, even spoke the same words and showed the same graph. It was literally what just happened five minutes before, down to even minor details, everything. No one else seemed to notice but myself. It was almost like that moment in time repeated itself. Case file number 870, written by The Real Lady Boneyard. I was recognized from another world. This was truly unnerving. I was at a restaurant with my mother and sister, and as we were looking at the menu, I heard someone call my name. This is where it gets really odd. Usually, people who think you're someone else don't use your name and they'll say they're sorry they thought you were someone else. Is it impossible they call me by my name? Of course not. However, when I turned around to look at them, they didn't say, sorry, wrong person. They looked encouraged and repeated my name, then tried to jog my memory by telling me where we'd met. A workplace I'd never had any interaction with ever. I couldn't think of what to say, so I blurted out, I'm sorry, but I don't know you and they genuinely looked confused and left. Still as jarring as it was that day. Case file number 871, written by DJ Deja, my dad from another universe. This took place when I was 18, and my brother was 16, around 2003 or 2004, our childhood home in small town Wisconsin. This is where we grew up prior to our parents getting a divorce. At this time, both of us had left our mom's house in Washington State and went to move back home and live with our dad. Anywho, my brother was in the living room watching TV and I went into the kitchen. I saw my dad writing out a check to pay the bills. I had to do a double take. I noticed something was off about him. He was writing with his right hand even though I distinctly remember that he was left-handed. He was the only one in our family that was left-handed so it always stood out to me. I asked him about it. I asked, 
Dad, aren't you left-handed? This caught my brother's attention. Our dad replied, No, but I kick with my left foot when we're playing football and kickball. Maybe that's what you're thinking of. My brother and I looked at each other in disbelief. We had always had a strong psychic connection, and he looked as freaked out as I was after what we just heard. Sadly, my brother is no longer with us, but I mentioned this experience to my dad again recently. Turns out he's still denying ever being a lefty. Case file number 872, written by Mola Molasses, The Mystery of the Thin Straw. About two years ago, right before the pandemic, I was hanging out with a couple of my friends at a fast food place during our last year of high school. One of them orders a root beer float and brings it to our table. I remember seeing this tiny little dinky straw stuck through the ice cream. I was going to crack some dumb joke about how on earth did they expect her to drink frozen ice cream through that pinprick sized tube, but she's already walked back towards the counter. At this point, I have no idea why she left, so I get up to follow her and see that she's asked for a plastic spoon in order to actually eat the float. The strange part, then, is when we get back to the table, the straw has just disappeared. I would usually chalk something like this up to just misremembering, but she then turns to me and says, Wait, wasn't there like a thin straw in this? I told her, yeah, I was literally going to make a joke about it. We looked around the table and seats in case the straw was propelled out by the carbonated root beer or something, but can't find it anywhere. It sounds incredibly dumb and insignificant, and when we mentioned it to our other friends, they just laughed it off like a joke. But honestly, this strange little experience still sticks with me. I'd like to imagine either the straw was transported to another universe, or we were transported to another identical universe with the exception of this one straw not existing. Case file number 873, written by Sethicus to Ash. The world ended on Thanksgiving. So this happened a few days ago on Thanksgiving Day, November 24th. I was getting ready to go to my friends for dinner in my bedroom and heard more noise than usual outside. I went to my window to get a visual on what was happening in the local neighborhood. There was more going on than would be a typical day but there are always normal neighborhood things happening, such as people in the yards and kids playing, dogs barking, squirrels, cars going by, and so on and so forth. There was nothing different in this moment besides the fact that the commotion was amplified, understandably so, seeing as it was a holiday. I took it in for a few seconds and went to the bathroom to pee. Mind you, I couldn't have been there for more than two minutes. I went back to the window because I needed to close it up before I left for my friend's house, and what I witness I don't think I'll ever fully comprehend beyond just accepting it as a universal glitch of some sorts, or interference with my own conscience. When I went to the window, there literally was nothing going on, not one person, not one noise, not one car. When I said nothing, I mean I could feel how silent and still it was, and the atmosphere was very heavy. I stood there, if not out of shock of sorts, for at least five minutes just waiting for someone or something or some noise to interrupt this deafening silence. I finally came to and got my bearings together enough to go downstairs and out the front door to get a better perspective, and this is when my heart skipped probably five beats. I opened the door and literally everything that was present prior to the seven minutes during the bathroom trip and my experience at the window was again in action. All my neighbors had at least a car in their driveway, kids were playing, birds were chirping, people out and about in cars going by. I since then subtly gained more insight into what my neighbors were up to, and every one of them said they never went anywhere during that time. Between noon and 2pm is what I asked, to make it easier for them to remember. I can't afford to have them think I was hallucinating or something, which I swear I wasn't as I do not use anything beyond a non-narcotic anxiety medicine called Inderol. Case file number 874, written by Janet in Spain, the best friend I'd never met before. This happened a while back, but still makes me go, hmm. I was new to the San Francisco Bay Area and was invited to a garden party by some people I met at a festival. I was kind of standing around feeling awkward when my eye caught a woman on the other side of the room. She also looked straight at me. We ran to each other and hugged, almost crying about how long it had been. 
Then we started trying to remember where we'd met. We'd never lived in the same city before. We'd never worked for the same company. We had no mutual friends. We never attended the same school or church. We had exactly zero history together. But our first glance and hug were of recognition and long lost affection. No drugs were going on at the party. I'd had less than one glass of wine. It wasn't any type of altered state that caused a sense of familiarity. We literally saw each other across the room and immediately ran arms outstretched towards each other. I've always wondered if it was a glitch or a past life memory. We were inseparable for months, total best friends. Then one day I called to ask if I could come over. My husband and I were having serious issues and I wanted to spend away time for the day with my best friend. She said no, that she didn't want my negative energy in her home. We never spoke or saw each other again after that. Whatever we needed to finish when we saw each other across that room had reached its conclusion. That door closed permanently. The whole thing was a surreal experience. Oh, and I divorced my husband. I wish I could now remember her name. I tried to find her on Facebook, but it's as if it was wiped from my brain. Case file number 875, written by 13 Luthien 4077. You'll need glasses to see this glitch. I wear glasses. I get new glasses from the same optometrist every two years after my prescription changes. I am incredibly nearsighted. I get the same frame type since I'm used to it and think it looks good. They're usually a rose gold or pinkish metal half frame with the bottom half of the frames being plastic tubing to hold the lenses in tightly. My last pair were pink with swirling wave-like patterns on the legs of the frames. Two weeks ago, I misplaced my new glasses. The nose pads were loose and of a firmer plastic than my old ones, so they clicked whenever I adjusted my glasses on my face. The metal was closer to gold than rose gold and the legs still had little square patterns on them, almost like ancient Greek pottery or clothing sometimes has. The ear pads were close to the same color as the metal. I could not find these glasses anywhere. For two weeks I wore my old ones, while I looked for the newer glasses. Last night, my mother picked up a pair of glasses that no one in our house recognized. We all wear glasses, but we also all have different prescriptions. My father and brother are just barely nearsighted to the point that their glasses are just for driving and reading, whereas my mother requires trifocals. I do not require trifocals or bifocals just yet. However, I am significantly more nearsighted than my father and brother with a steep astigmatism that no one in the family has. Regardless, the mystery glasses frames were a rich rose gold with brown ear pads. The legs were split shanked at the hinges with wave patterns further down the leg. I firmly declared those were not my missing glasses since the frames looked nothing like the new ones. Everyone tried them on and the prescription of these mystery glasses only matched me. Therefore logically, the glasses must be mine. These mystery frames are the most confirmed glitch I have ever experienced in my life. The nose pads click whenever the glasses shift or I adjust them. The prescription is undoubtedly mine. However, looking at old selfies, the frames are a different shape. I even took them to my autometrist's office and they confirmed the prescription is mine, but the frames did not come from their office. There is no brand serial number anywhere on these glasses. Nobody can tell me in the slightest where these frames came from, and I still cannot find the other frames. Case file number 876, written by Fall Asleep Forever 88, the leaf that proves we live in the matrix. The most significant yet basic glitch I've ever experienced was a time when I was walking along the road. It was autumn, so leaves were falling. It was a fair distance from any trees though, but things felt still and despite being in a large town, there wasn't any traffic, noise or people. I remember it being super calm and was looking ahead fully aware of things rather than just daydreaming as I walked or looking at a phone. From the beginning of noticing what happened to the end was about 20 seconds and I was not intoxicated at all. This location is usually noisy and busy, but I was alone. I recall feeling like everything had slowed down. It was so quiet and looking back, I think it was similar to when video games don't render the environment fast enough and it takes a while to process textures in. So what happened was, 
I saw a large bunch of leaves suddenly begin to spin around like a vortex about 15 steps away, even though the weather was calm. It doesn't seem unrealistic that these things happen in a breeze. As I looked at this, which was literally the only thing around me that seemed to be occurring, the leaves were randomly starting to spiral around all at different speeds, so it caught my attention. The leaves were going up about 5 or 6 feet in the air, and I noticed they seemed to be out of place. Why would there be about 50 leaves altogether? No stray ones here and there or spread out around the vicinity, just one pile that suddenly began to spin around up ahead which somehow ended up there even though the closest tree was 100 meters away. All of a sudden, as I walked closer and looked at this happening, one single brown leaf stopped. It was above the rest of them which were in motion like a shoal of fish, and it just got stuck, in mid-air in the middle of an empty road broad daylight. It was like it had been paused or that the codes that nature and the simulation used to process the weather had bugged out like a frozen computer. One single leaf totally motionless over 5 feet up in the air as all the others moved around it. It didn't move for maybe 4-5 to five seconds? I looked and began to move towards it and spoke out loud something like, What the hell? As I got closer, all the other leaves just dropped down on the ground motionless but that leaf didn't fall immediately. It dropped about two seconds after the rest as I stood staring bewildered at a single leaf there just stuck in the air like a broken pixel on a TV screen. It's almost like it bugged out and it took a moment for it to be processed. I did laugh, but the image of that single leaf stuck right in the air still causes me confusion to this very day. Afterwards, around 30 seconds later, I noticed all of the sounds of cars and people playing music, shouting in the distance and sirens, the birds singing and all the usual things return. I feel like it all faded back in, but in such a way that it startled me, similar to when you turn the volume dial on a powerful sound system up high for a second and it makes you jump. Things were just suddenly loud again. I wish I had thought to pick that leaf up. Maybe I should have walked faster and walked through this leaf vortex just to see what happened but that's how it is, always in hindsight. It was only later that day I realized just how bizarre the situation was. I'll never be able to get my head around that and it's just such a simple thing. All I can say is that it definitely wasn't normal and I honestly wish you could all realize how real it felt. Maybe there's bugs in the codes for mother nature or the simulation, but I haven't a clue why an isolated pile of leaves would suddenly create a vortex that high without it being windy and behave in such a way, as well as that sensation of the world around me fading out like that. Who knows? I still wonder about that one brown leaf from time to time. All I know is that I saw what I saw. Please speculate if you have any comments to make. Yours sincerely, a 34-year-old man from the rural East Midlands of England. Peace and love to all. Case file number 877, written by Psychological Use 346, the nap that I never woke from. I was always very open-minded, believed that everything is possible, and tried to get a scientific answer to everything that happened in my life. But for this story, I don't have a definite answer yet, so let's cut to the chase. This happened almost three years ago. I live in Brazil and I spent about three weeks in New York City for work. I arrived in New York City on January 28th with flu symptoms, but not all that sufficient to put me in bed. This was at a time when the virus was starting to get some engagement in the news, but nothing that could or would raise any global concerns, because it was only in China and little to no cases in other countries. I worked as expected, healthy, only sneezing on the week of January 28th, and he had the weekend free to explore New York City as I already went to New York City other times, including a 40-day stay in December 2019. I did not do any sightseeing. I just rode the city bike around Central Park and had lunch on the 14th Street Whole Foods Market restaurant because I needed to stop by GameStop to buy a PS4 power cord. Yes, I brought my PS4 to a work trip. <laughs> I felt extra tired when having lunch and decided to head tail uptown and took a subway there. Once I got to my hotel room, I was a little feverish, took some Alka-Seltzer, and decided to take a nap. And that was it. Next thing I remember, I was standing, watching my soccer team play on the TV three plus hours after I went for the nap, now without a fever or any of the flu symptoms. 
I don't remember waking up at all. I don't have any memory of leaving the bed, turning on the computer and reaching for the streaming platform. One moment I was laying in bed, a nap coming on. Then a split second later I'm standing, watching the soccer match without any of the symptoms, and three hours later. At first I was, okay, it was probably amnesia. I don't have a history of amnesia or memory loss at all though, and this story only becomes creepy because of how the world events turned out in the next months, until now. I mean, we were not caring about the virus at all, nobody was giving a second thought to it, and the situation was under control according to the experts. Not only that, I believe everything became worse in all aspects. It's like I'm living my life before February 1st where the world was one thing, and after February 1st, another world completely different. I read a lot about shifting dimensions, and this is the closest I went as an explanation of what happened. Did I die from the flu? Case file number 878, written by Gladwinner8700. Harry Potter magic is real. About five years ago, a friend went to some Harry Potter thing. I think it was maybe at Disney World or something of the sort. He brought me back some souvenirs, a Gryffindor keychain, a butterbeer mug, and a really cute feather quill pin. It was black and made out of rubber with a very fine point. I loved it, and I used it a lot in college. I've never seen another one like it anywhere. I have one of those little storage bins with three drawers that I keep all my junk in that I can't seem to part ways with. A portable junk drawer, if you will. I've moved twice since getting the pen and tossed it inside years ago. A few months ago, I decided to do some spring cleaning. I cleaned the junk drawer out and was so excited to see it again as I had forgotten all about it. I stuck it in a basket with my kitchen counter for easy access when I needed a pen. After the junk drawer cleaned out, I decided to go through some random bags of junk I had in my closet. I tend to stuff stuff in closets when I'm feeling lazy, and it kind of piles up in random Walmart bags. Well, I'm going through one and I find that same pen. I was very confused by this and thought maybe I had thrown it in the bag instead of on the kitchen counter, so I went to check, and there's the pen in the basket on the counter. There are two of them now. I swear I only ever had one and I can't wrap my head around how I ended up with two. It still freaks me out. Case file number 879, written by Lights On Nobody Home 91. Low Frequency Terror. My experiences began 10 years ago. I heard a weird sound that sounded sharp, almost like a jolting sound. It sounded like a trumpet or some kind of wind instrument. It was quick and sudden and sounded foreboding. I'll also mention I believe there were other beings here that were not human. I believe they were a small group of people who posed as humans. Then as time went on, I began to believe they were more than half the population of the world. When I began to believe a friend of mine was one, I heard that sound. He showed a face that no human can make. Also, up till that time, I'd seen three others who showed strange faces. As well, when I lived on that street, moved there about four or five years before that sound happened, I'd hear a squeaking and squealing sound, like a swing set. After, it dawned on me that I'd heard it every single time I go outside, only in the backyard, so I noticed a trend. And I would sit outside on the back stoop for hours, it'd be constant, but I just ignored it. After some years, I began to search for the sound. I couldn't find it in the area that I'd heard it from. I looked all over the apartment complex and in the yards of people who lived in the houses. Their backyards were easily visible. Never found the swing set, and then the sound just stopped happening. Also, I'd even hear a loud bang of metal crashing down on the main road I lived near. I presumed it was happening at the place that had a good bit of used, broken down cars in the lot. I think they were in a garage, but there was a park across the street, no swing sets, in the opposite direction of the swing sets that I'd sit in at times. I never heard the loud banging, crashing sound there. Now to the more recent sounds, there are absolutely no industrial places around here. They're all several miles away by the bay, shipyards, but on the 16th and 17th of November, I heard some strange sounds. It was around 11 a.m. Central Time when I heard it. It sounded like some repeated banging or like an explosion. Almost like a horn or a very, very loud sound of air escaping. 
It was a deep sound, almost like a tuba, but it sounded like banging. I don't know how to describe the sound precisely, maybe drums? It was happening for about four bangs, then it hit me that the sound shouldn't be coming from that direction. There are no places in this area that can produce a sound, so I began to pay attention and it lasted for a few more bangs. Then yesterday, I was taking a shower at my mom's house while visiting her and I heard a very loud rumbling sound. It was too deep in notes, like a bass sound, but it was rumbling. I've lived near trains and airports before and it sounded very similar to a train being about 100 yards away or a plane flying low and directly overhead. But the nearest trains in the area are about 4 more miles off and I never hear the trains in that direction. And I never feel the trains the way I did yesterday. should also mention the loud rumbling from yesterday. If it was a plane, the plane would have to be less than a half mile above the ground and pretty much just hovering almost directly above my mom's house. Bonus file, written by Sabababa, Black Sheep, my friendly back rubbing demon. I, female 18, honestly have no better way to put this. This happens quite often, happened just a few moments ago in fact. Sometimes, regardless of the time of day, I'll lay down on my bed. But then I start to feel two hands on my back rubbing me, and there is legitimate movement on my bed. Like an honest-to-God movement that is indistinguishable from if someone was actually there. This normally happens late at night, but has happened during the day before. I have no idea what this is. Funniest thing is, this thing rubs my back normally exactly where I need it to, if I have no pain, it just rubs generally. One late night of working on an art piece, I finished up the piece and my lower back was killing me because of how I was sitting. I groaned and touched my lower back before I jumped on my bed, on my stomach. You can guess what happens next. I start to feel a pair of hands rubbing my lower back. I'm shocked. I lay there for 15 minutes processing the fact no one was in the room but me and I have never been in a relationship before so I have never been given back rubs but this back rubbing demon sure helps. I'll be honest, I didn't know what to do so I just said thank you to whatever was doing it. Either my brain is playing tricks on me or I live with a back rubbing demon. Either way I'm thankful so might as well make it known. Case file number 880 Written by Hot Wings and Soda. Proof that we're immortal. I've told this to my friend at least a dozen times because he wants to make sense of it. This truly shook me. This happened on a road trip when I was 17, almost 18. It was me and my sister, a couple years older than me, and she was driving a super long beaten road throughout the desert. About two hours on the road passed, and suddenly I noticed that the car that was behind us veered off the road and came to a standstill. My sister audibly wonders what they're up to. A few dozen seconds later, there's this terrible series of bumps and cracks in the road that shake the car and knock the phone off the seat, taking the auxiliary out and halting the music. It lands close to me, so I pick it up and start to reconnect the phone. When I do, we get this random catchy ad about trash. The next thing of note happens seconds after the ad ends. I stare off into the window and I see a truck parked ahead of us. As we pass it, I stupidly kept looking at it, and the sheen it gave off, the glare from the sun completely blinded me for a bit. When I closed my eyes, I still saw the outline of it. I was afraid it was burned into my retinas when I finally opened my eyelids. It started to fade slowly and all I can remember seeing after that is the emergency airbag in the car pop into my face and sounds of metal on metal. My vision started going black and the image that's in my eyes from the truck fades away completely. But when it fades, I open my eyes to see us still driving like nothing happened. That's when I noticed the car behind us. Same license plate as before, same car, color, even the same driver to my eyes. The same thing happened again. The road being bad and bumping the phone down, the auxiliary disconnecting, and the same damn ad playing. All the while I'm panicking in my head since my sister dismissed my questions like nothing out of the ordinary happened. We come up to the truck again and I stare. My eyes again have the after image of it. Just as before, I hear metal scraping and feel the airbag pummel my face. 
As it fades, I'm scared to open my eyes again, but I hear my sister ask, What is that car doing? It forces my eyes open to see the same car for the third time, steering into the open desert before halting. I'm in full-blown panic mode as I looked ahead and see the crude road up ahead. I hold onto my phone for dear life and manage to stop the phone from disconnecting, but we still get an ad when the next song plays. The same damn ad. As it nears its end, I stop myself from looking at the truck and instead look ahead, noticing that the car in the opposite lane is swerving slightly. I piece it together in my head and caution my sister about the driver in the car. She has to swerve to avoid the car as it goes into the wrong side of the road, barely missing our car thanks to my sister's driving. The rest of the trip went without much of a hitch. My friend said it may have been something like quantum immortality or a swamp between universes. I've always been interested in this stuff, but I have no clue how to explain my experience. Case file number 881. Written by Anonymous. An IQ so high, it broke the matrix. I've always had déjà vu. Not every day, but I'll go through weeks where I get it a lot and weeks where I don't. The only difference between me and most people is that incidents are extreme and almost as if I can predict the future within about 10 seconds. I'm able to know exactly, word for word, what someone will say, even when it's something completely random. I know when traffic lights will change, even when they're in unfamiliar places. I know when someone is going to show up randomly at my house. These may all have explanations, maybe subconsciously just having a really good sense of time or knowing what someone will say, but one time this saved my life. I was driving with my mom and I started to get the feeling. She was driving and I don't know why she believed me, but I'm glad she did. I had told her about my other experiences, but I don't think she ever really believed me before. Anyway, we were driving and I knew that the car coming towards us was going to come onto the wrong side of the road. I told her something along the lines of, That car is going to come on the wrong side of the road, move over right now! As soon as I said it, the car on the other side came onto our side of the road and almost killed us exactly as I pictured it in my head a few seconds before. I think she moved over just to humor me, but it saved us from a likely deadly accident. This is just one example, but it's an extreme one. And ever since that day, my parents believe me when I know something is going to happen. Case file number 882, written by Unicorn Girl 24. The universe is gaslighting me. About five weeks ago, my husband and I had a family emergency in which we left our house rather quickly. When we returned home, it was still in the middle of a work week, so I unpacked our suitcases and threw the clothes into our laundry room and just kind of tossed any other items on the shelf in our bedroom. Two days later, I realized my wallet was missing. I knew without a doubt that I had put it in one of my suitcase pockets, so I checked there first, but it wasn't there. I checked the same pocket on my husband's suitcase as well, thinking he had mistakenly placed it in there. Still nothing. But I know, even in my haste to unpack and prepare to go back to work, I saw the wallet. My husband then tells me he remembers seeing it on the bed the night we got home, and I remembered seeing it too. I remembered seeing him move it to the shelf when he came to get into bed. Two weeks go by and I can't find it, but I haven't panicked because I know we both have seen it inside the house, so it has to be somewhere stupid, like I put it in the cabinet or something when I was getting ready for work. Three weeks go by and I have checked the suitcases again probably 15 times just to recheck. The weekend of the third week, we travel out of town and use the suitcases again. I pack and unpack, nothing of note. Five weeks later, this weekend, we decided to go out of town and I'm packing my suitcase and see a weird bulge in one of the pockets. It's the wallet. I'm not sure what kind of glitch happened, but I know I have checked that pocket at least 20 times to make sure I wasn't just missing it. But there it was, plain as day. Case file number 883, written by King Bullwife. The universe exiled me. I worked at a car rental agency a couple years ago. Part of the job was picking up customers at the auto body shop and bringing them to our office to put them in a rental car. This particular day, I was supposed to pick up a guy at a shop that was only a 3 minute drive from the office. Notes on his reservation said to pick him up at around 11.30. I left the office at 11.25 and headed over. 
When I pulled onto the lot of the shop, the door to the main office, waiting room, service counter, etc. was open. The garage bay doors were also open, but there were cars in the garage in various states of repair and such, but no customers. In fact, no employees. No one at all. No customers in the waiting room. No one behind the counter. No one in the garage is working on any cars. There were even a couple cars parked in the small lot but no people. I walked around the entire perimeter of the building and waited about 10 minutes. No one showed up. So I headed back to our office and told my boss no one was there. Our phone rings about 2 minutes after I'm back at work. The customer says that he's at the shop and is waiting for us to pick him up. I didn't mention that I was already there, I just went again. When I get to the shop, there's a guy behind the counter, two or three customers in the waiting room, about five or six guys in the garage working on cars, and my customer standing by his car, getting a few belongings out of it. Oddly enough, it's one of the cars that was already there in the first time I went. Still no idea what happened. It's like I was in an empty version of the property with no characters spawned in yet. Case file number 884, written by The Killers 22, The Diapers That Disprove Reality. I'm half convinced my baby's diaper bag is a portal. I keep a lot of things in there, as moms tend to do. With the seasons being temperamental, I often have to entirely empty it so I can redo his spare outfits to be long sleeve, short sleeve, and so on. My husband and I always buy Kirkland brand diapers, always have. They are generic, they just have random cartoon animals on them that aren't licensed characters. Twice now, I've found diapers in the bag I've never seen before. One was a Sesame Street diaper, another one was Finding Nemo. I have no idea where these came from, and neither does my husband. In a true stay-at-home mom fashion, I have no life or friends and I just hang out with my husband, my mom, or my sister. None of them would like slip a random diaper in the bag and not tell me. Plus, where would one even get one single diaper instead of an entire pack? Anyway, pray for me and my reality-shifting diaper bag. Case file number 885, written by Munchie, 612. The Necklace to Rule Them All I was in my late 20s or early 30s. I'm in my 70s now and still amazed by this. I bought a silver ring at an art festival, had the ring part, that goes on your finger, cut off, and the rest of the ring made into a charm to wear on a chain. I wore it every day, 24-7, never removed it, and constantly rubbed it like a worry stone. Because it was cut off a of ring, it had a lumpy texture, and I was always playing with it. One night during intimacies with my then boyfriend, the pendant kept hitting him in the face, so I took it off and tossed it across the room into my vanity table. I heard it hit the table and slide off, assuming it landed on the carpet. Next morning, I couldn't find it. Not anywhere on the carpet, not stuck to any part of the vanity, not in any drawer, nowhere. Oh yeah, forgot to mention that the chain it was on had a broken clasp and I had it closed with a safety pin. I had never had it repaired. Also, I always thought that because I spent so much time rubbing this charm, if I ever lost it, it would find its way back to me. I often said this in a half-joking manner. So about 6 months later, an acquaintance of mine, a friend of a friend, called me at around 1am, pleading with me to bring some migraine medication to her work, which was quite far from my home. She was suffering, so I got the medication and drove to her workplace at Parkway General Hospital. There were only 2 or 3 cars in the parking lot due to the time of day, with only me walking across the parking lot to the back entrance of the hospital, and one other person, a woman who was a housekeeper at the hospital in her uniform. I looked at her and what the hell on earth? My necklace was around her neck. I was practically hypnotized as I walked towards her and when I got to her I reached for the charm and pendant and said, you're wearing my necklace, give it back to me. She said that no, it's hers, that her brother had given it to her for her birthday. I said, this is my necklace and I want it back, I know it is. I described the rough back to her and the broken chain and said, that's my chain. It's broken and held together with a safety pin. Please take it off. She did remove it and yes, it was the broken chain with the safety pin. She said she wanted to call her brother, so we went into the hospital, walking down empty hallways with me wondering if she was going to end me there. We got to a phone and she dialed her brother's number. While waiting for someone to answer, I came to my senses and said, 
That is my necklace. I want it back and I want it now. I'm not leaving here without it. Amazingly, she wordlessly took the necklace off and placed it over my head and on my neck. I said, thank you, and walked away to find my friend and give her her medicine. I asked anyone and everyone who might have been in my house since the night I tossed a necklace onto the vanity table, and no one had been in my house or my bedroom since the night I tossed it. No one had vacuumed my carpet. I still cannot fathom how my necklace moved from my vanity in South Miami and ended up on the neck of a housekeeper who worked at a hospital 45 minutes north of my home. She was a perfect stranger to me. This is the glitchiest of all glitches that I've ever experienced. Creepy File Number 70 Written by The Evil Pack Rat The Mysterious Wire I'm a truck driver. I'm very fortunate because I'm paid by the hour, not by the mileage of the trip. Because we are paid by the hour, we are told that vehicle inspections are part of the time of work, so unlike many truck drivers, we actually do full inspections every morning. Many claim they do vehicle inspections, but I only saw this company which now actually has drivers do it. So every morning around 6.30am or 5.30am, I inspect my truck. I check for anything that damages oil levels and water. Strangely enough, one day I got a new wire attached to the exhaust system I had never seen before on the same truck I had been driving for a year. When I say a new wire, I should point out it's just new to me. It has some wear and tear of all the other parts of the engine, and it doesn't look new. It's only that I've never seen it before on the truck. That's about it. Just some stupid single wire. Nothing glamorous or cool, just wire that did not exist the previous day. No, it was not in the shop getting worked on. Nobody was paid to install it in the middle of the night. One day it appeared, and that's it. Case file number 886, written by Dark Horse Gaming. The universe split my soul. I, 20 male, have a black Kia soul. Since I don't have a job yet, I've been doing odd jobs for my neighbors. I leave after lunch for work and get back home before dinner. Nothing unusual. Until two days ago, that is. I left at three to go burn some brush with my dad's friend. I got back at around six. My phone went off. I had a text from my mom asking if I was back. I said I was. I go into the house and take a shower. Mom asked if I just got home. Yeah, why? I asked. Your sister said she saw your car in the driveway an hour ago. You didn't come back and then leave again? Mom asked. I didn't come back and leave again. I was gone for three straight hours, but my sister swear she saw my car in the driveway at around five, an hour before I got home. Any explanations? Creepy file number 71, written by Loki, a sun don't shine hole, the trailer park stalker. About three years ago, I was 38 weeks pregnant. My husband and I lived in what we call our village. It was two dead end streets off a highway with forests beyond the ends of the roads, with a small local store at the corner of one street. We called it the village because our trailer park neighbors were my aunt, uncle, and cousin's trailer and then my husband's brother and nieces. Then, my grandma's house was on the next street over. My other aunt, uncle, and cousins lived with her at the time. My husband and I were 21 then. My best friend, Ray, was visiting from college and spent the night with me. The next day, we decided to walk up my street down the highway past the store, then down my grandma's street and back through the woods to my house. This was to try to help get labor started as my pregnant belly was huge and my back was in pain. We were talking while I hobbled with her down the highway when a white truck rode by rather slowly. I knew the speed limit was about 55 and this dude had to be going like 30 miles per hour if that. Through the driver window I saw a bald white man, maybe in his 50s, rubbernecking at us. At this time, it looked like there might have been someone else in the passenger seat. The truck was kind of old, but I didn't know the year, make, or model, or see the plate. Ray was talking and unbothered until I said, Hey, that guy just went by really slow. I don't think that was anyone I know. She replied with something like, Oh, I didn't even notice that. We were halfway to the store less than two minutes later when we saw him coming back from the other direction. I said, 
That's him again. Get in the grass. Since we were on what would have been his right side, we went down the slope of grass off the road. We are still in front of people's houses because the section of highway is lined with residences between the dead end streets. He passes us, slowly, again, and when I turn to look behind us, he is slowing down even more, finds a spot and starts to turn the truck around. I told Ray to run, so we ran. I was doing the best I could being super pregnant. We thought about going in the store, but decided to head for my grandma's up the other street instead. Her house was up the hill at the end, but it wasn't a long run. When we got up the hill, I looked back again to see his truck pulling into the store parking lot. We continued to run, got to my grandma's where she and my aunt were sitting at the table and told them what just happened. My aunt made a police report. I was afraid at first, thinking maybe I was paranoid. What if it was someone I knew and they were trying to say hi, and maybe it was a waste of the police's time? Turns out, there had been other reports of a man creeping around the neighborhoods. Someone in another trailer park down the highway reported that her kids were outside playing when a man emerged from the woods trying to lure one of them to him. They hollered for their mom and supposedly she came out and threatened him so he ran off. It continues. A few more times we think we see his truck, but are not sure if it's him since one of the residents also has a white truck. My family had yet to see the truck so they couldn't identify it. At some point when I wasn't home, a few of my cousins were playing outside. Their ages ranged from 10 to 15. This time, the truck came rolling down our little street past them. He turned around at the end, came back up and stopped next to them. They said he was trying to lure my 11 year old cousin to the truck, but he said no and they all ran back to my aunt's house. We had talked with the children about what was going on in the neighborhood lately. One more thing happened before the report stopped. I had my baby at 40 weeks. My husband, his friend, the baby and I were home. Baby was about a week old. We got a call from my aunt at grandma's house that they had seen the man real up close and personal. My two female teen cousins were in their room. It was getting dark out, but for some reason my cousin went to open the blinds to the window and there was the man squatting on the AC unit, staring at them. They screamed and he jumped off and ran into the woods behind the house. My aunt called the police. My husband and his friend later went out with guns and flashlights to search for him, but did not find him. I believe he was parking his truck somewhere and then stalking houses from the forest. My husband and I actually used to walk through those woods and never had any issues as it was private land that we had permission to walk on. It also seems that this man did not have a preference for age or gender. He was looking for anyone he could get for whatever sick reason. There had been police sent to patrol the highway or sit on the side of the road waiting, keeping an eye out for him throughout those weeks, but they never caught him. I still wonder sometimes if he was someone from out of town and hope maybe somewhere else he gets busted before something bad happens. We might never know. We contacted the store owner to see if he caught the truck's plates on his security camera, but you couldn't see the plates from the angle the man pulled up through. Case fall number 887, written by Dan Frick 69, YouTube Disrupted Time. All right. I will paint a clearer picture of all this. I am 16 years old and have a very good memory. I have never taken any drugs or alcohol except for grandpa's last sip of beer every now and then. You get the point, I am healthy, both mentally and physically, and have never had a history of mental illness and chronic conditions whatsoever. Never even an episode. I am your average 16 year old. I was not sleep deprived or exhausted as today was a snow day, no school. I slept in and got great sleep. Anyways, let's move on. It's 10.30. I had just gotten out of the shower and sat down on the couch to watch some YouTube videos. It was a pretty average night for me. I watched three YouTube videos, they were all 10-15 to 15 minutes long, and the time should only have been 11.30 maximum. I get up to grab something from the fridge and in the kitchen is my microwave clock, stove clock, and a wall hanging clock. All clocks read 4.26 a.m. Apparently, I watched YouTube for 5 hours. Naturally, I checked my video history to see if maybe I blanked out and lost track of time somehow. Nope, 
All three of my videos are there, each marked with the time I watched them. 10.30ish, 10.45ish, 10.55ish. As I said, it couldn't have been more than 11.15, maybe 11.30. But my phone clock says 4.26am. What happened to where I could lose 5 hours out of the blue? This has never happened to me and it's really odd and generally unsettling. Maybe I fell asleep on the couch? I know I didn't because I have never had an issue with sleeping like that. If anyone has anything on this matter or has any logical and sensible explanations for this odd phenomenon, please leave a comment. Case file number 888, written by Bloink. When the universe decides to bake cookies. So, I made cookie dough and let it sit in the fridge. I've been making a couple when I want them. Problem is, it's been a while since I've baked cookies, so I keep over-baking them. Last night, I made some after dinner. I put them straight on the little tray in the air fryer, and it was a bit of a disaster because the cookies went through the grates in the tray and stuck to it. So, I vowed never to do that again and always put them on tinfoil. I scraped them off and they were just crumbs by the end. I took out the tray and left it in the sink to soak off the crumbs. Also, I have a cold and couldn't really taste it, so I didn't take care to make any more and just brushed my teeth and went to bed. My husband stayed in the kitchen slash living room for the rest of the night. This evening, next day, my husband says he tried the cookies I made and really liked them. I say, what cookies? He says, the ones you made last night and left in the air fryer. I said, no, I only made the ones that stuck to the tray and we basically both just kept insisting that the other had made it. Well, to be more specific, he just wanted to drop it and assumed I made them and forgot about it, i.e. he wasn't trying to spook me or make a big deal out of it. I was the only one who found it particularly strange. Some other details. They were baked on the bottom of the air fryer, below the tray. Now I've never ever put something straight onto the air fryer with no tray before. It hadn't even been cleaned super recently so it was still a little greasy and had random bits down there. No way would put homemade cookies in that mess. My husband said he didn't even know where the dough was to be made. And of course it's not like he was trying to hide the fact that he ate cookies, just insisted he didn't bake them. I went to bed and didn't return that night. The cookies were perfectly baked according to my significant other. I still don't even know the right timing for them and could probably only get well-baked ones if I check them closely. My husband definitely doesn't know how long to bake them for. They would also get over-baked even if you set the time correctly and just left them inside. Neither me nor my significant other were on anything and we live alone. I went to bed very shortly after taking out the tray, seeing nothing at the bottom of the air fryer and going to bed. My husband was in that room the rest of the night, so there was never a time when we were both asleep and he wasn't in the living room slash kitchen prior to mysterious cookies appearing. So, who made the cookies? Bonus file, written by Picasso96, The Old Man Next Door. So this happened when I was 5 years old. I'm female, 26 now, and from Norway. I have experienced some strange things at different times in my life but I just can't believe 100% in the paranormal, mostly because I always find an explanation for it. But this story, I just can't explain it and I can't forget it. So this was back in the spring in 2001. I was playing in the garden while my mom and younger siblings were inside. I always played by myself and didn't have any friends at the time. Well, I had one friend, an old man who lived next door. I know that sounds really strange, <laughs> but it wasn't like that. He was like a grandpa to me. Whenever I was outside alone, I went over to him. He was always in his outhouse, working on things. There were tools there and other cool stuff. He would teach me how to use different tools in his old MC bike, and he always had a sandwich for me. He was the best grandpa ever. One day, while I was hanging out with the neighbor, my mom was calling for me because it was dinner time. I gave the old man a hug and ran back home. When I got inside, my mom told me to wash my hands and eat. She began to ask me why I was always in the neighbor's garden and that I couldn't invade other people's privacy. So I told her about the old man who lived there and all the fun things he taught me. My mom looked at me strangely and asked, What man? So I described him and told his name. And my mom looked even more strangely at me and suddenly she looked a bit shocked. And then she said it, An old man doesn't live there anymore, 
Only an old woman, her husband you described, who died a few years ago. He is in heaven. I will never forget those words. What the hell? How is that even possible? After that, I never saw him again. I looked for him almost every day. It was so real back then, and I just can't understand it. We ate sandwiches, drank soda, and fixed his bike. I refuse to think that I was just imagining this. I just can't explain it. Case file number 889, written by It's Okay, It's Alright. I control the world with my mind. The other day, just an ordinary regular day, I was lying on my bed watching TV. I had to leave to run some errands and thought quickly to myself, I need to turn off the TV. I reached for the remote that was on the bed near me, and as my finger barely touched the bottom of the remote, the TV shut off. The power button is at the top of the remote and my finger was nowhere near it. I paused for a second, stared at the TV and grabbed the remote. I thought to myself, I haven't turned off the TV yet. It shouldn't be off, it should still be on. Just as this thought popped into my head, the TV quickly turned back on, but kind of glitched. The picture kind of froze a bit, before fully going back to normal. I sat there, frozen in confusion. I blinked a few times and just stared at the TV. I then turned it off, but continued to sit there not knowing what just happened. I know how this sounds. Crazy. I want to also say that I wasn't on drugs, alcohol, or impaired in any way at all. I hadn't been asleep or anything out of the unusual. I also have never experienced anything like this before. I wasn't watching any movie or TV show recently with something like this, nor had I heard any similar stories. Literally, there is nothing that could have influenced me into hallucinating or imagining this happened. The one thing I will note is that I've always been prone to what's called street light interference or SLI. It is when lights or electronics flicker or go off in your presence sometimes. It doesn't affect my life too much though. I haven't worn a wristwatch in like 15 years. I have random Wi-Fi issues, but it's more of an annoyance than anything. It's also not too often. However, for me, it's always affected things like batteries, clocks, computers, etc. It also has never happened while I was thinking about it, like turning off the TV. I know this sounds weird. I don't know if it was a glitch or what, but I felt like I should post it here to see if anyone has experienced something like this or can offer their thoughts. I actually made myself a note not to forget it, because I also had a feeling my brain would try to make sense of it and just justify it somehow as if it was normal. Sometimes we tend to do that when we can't comprehend what just happened, and I didn't want to forget just how strange this was, but I can't rationalize what happened. Has anyone experienced anything like this before? Case file number 890, written by Anonymous. The Universal Souvenir. About two years ago, 2020, my mother-in-law bought me a blue hoodie with stars on it. It's a little young for me, but it was nice for working out or tossing it on to walk to the mailbox. It developed a hole in the front pocket, so I couldn't put my phone in the pocket. No big deal because it wasn't my favorite hoodie or anything, so I hung it up in the closet. Last winter, 2021, I went to pull a random hoodie from the closet and I grabbed the star hoodie and came downstairs. I forget I grabbed it, run back upstairs to the closet and grab the star hoodie again. I got that sick, something isn't right feeling when I saw it. I now have two indistinguishable crappy blue star hoodies. I can't tell the difference between the old one and the new one. The new one also has a hole in the front pocket. They both had strings originally but one of the jackets lost the string in the wash recently. I have no idea where the copy came from. I wouldn't have purchased it since I didn't really like the original. My mother-in-law didn't give me a new one. I never told her I wanted or needed one after the pocket tour. I try not to think about the duplicating hoodie, but I wish it had copied one I actually liked. Case file number 891, written by Bonita248. My son vanished without a trace. Hello, I'm a married mother of four. Last night, I'm pretty sure my nine-year-old son glitched. So last night, I went to take a shower and enjoy some peace for about a good 20 minutes. Of course, the kids came knocking anyway, and I made them go away. Meanwhile, their dad, let's just call him B for the sake of the story, was downstairs cooking while my six-year-old daughter, K, and my son, J, were on their devices. Anyways, I get out of the shower and come downstairs. 
B says, Where's J? I said I didn't know. I was taking a shower. He must be upstairs with his other siblings. About 10 minutes pass and B calls J's name multiple times and gets no response. Then K, the six-year-old, says J ran away. He went out the door. So I tell them to search the house because he's got to be around here somewhere. Meanwhile, I go search the neighborhood. Now just to be clear, the only unlocked door or window was the front door and it's loud when you open it. The back window was open but I closed and locked it just in case the little guy decided to come through the window without getting caught. I searched the neighborhood, no J, called around to a couple neighbors and they haven't seen him either. By this time, worry sets in because we're in Michigan, it's cold and dark out and he didn't have his coat. The police were called. They searched the neighborhood, the playground, and the nearby small wooded area to no avail. Now at this point, they're wondering just as we were if Jay was still in the house. We allow them to search the house. They searched every room, closet, basement, and cabinets twice. Nope. So now they are on the walkie-talkies calling for the K-9 unit. My 8-year-old daughter was asked to show her dad and the police where his friends live so they can check there too. She went to the closet and said, matter of factly, found him. I'm like, huh? He was in the coat closet, a place that was searched twice by the officers and by us. I know my son is good at hiding, but how did we all not see him? The closet is small and there's not much in it. My thoughts were that he teleported. It's strange because before the police arrived, I was talking to my other kids saying that if Jay glitched and he disappeared and came back, well, there you go. After the cops left, I asked Jay how he ended up in the closet. How did you not hear us calling for you? He says he doesn't know. He said he was running away and somehow woke up in the closet. I'm so confused and my mind is blown, but I'm glad he's back. Case file number 892, written by Lollipops and Tokens. The phone call that shattered reality. About a year ago, I received a very odd phone call. For a little context, back in early March of 2021, I was desperately looking for a job. I must have applied to at least 80 different places, many of which got back to me. In April of 2021, I got a job at Walmart, working as a cashier. A few weeks after that, I had work and my shift was supposed to end at 11pm. However, for personal reasons, I ended up leaving work at around 6pm. But to leave early, I had to check in with my manager. While waiting to speak with my manager, I heard her ask one of my colleagues to go to the staff room for a staff meeting. I remember being relieved that I didn't have to go through a staff meeting. On the way home from work, around 6.30pm, I received a phone call from a random number. I answered and the guy on the other end told me his name and the company he worked for. He called regarding an available job opportunity and asked me if I was still interested. I asked, quite puzzled, whether we had chatted recently. What he told me next scared the crap out of me. He said that we had just chatted over the phone about an hour ago. When I told him that isn't possible since I'm not allowed to have my phone on while working, he proceeded to read my name and number aloud. I asked him if he made some sort of mistake and he said that when he spoke with me earlier, he confirmed my name and number with me then as well. He told me that when we chatted earlier, I told him to call me back after 6pm because I was in a meeting. This caught me off guard since I had just missed the staff meeting as mentioned above. I then explained to him that I work as a cashier at Walmart and that even if we did chat an hour ago I would not have him call me back at 6pm since I was still supposed to be at work and ended up leaving early for an emergency. I also told him that I actually had just missed the staff meeting by chance as well. At this point, we were both kind of just shocked and kept going back and forth about how strange and weird that is. He was 100% certain that this wasn't a mistake on his end and that we chatted for sure. He even went so far as telling me that my voice is the exact same voice that he spoke with earlier. After 5 straight minutes of complete shock and utter confusion, it ended off on a nice note with him thanking me for my time and me wishing him a good weekend. I checked later that night whether or not I had actually applied to the company he worked for and it turns out I did apply. Every now and then I think about how eerie that whole situation was. I know for a fact I did not speak to that man and he knows for a fact that he definitely spoke to me. In regards to phone records, my dad pays the entire family's phone bills and has all the records. 
This happened over a year ago, and I must have cleared my recent calls a million times by then. Also, when I told him he's made some sort of mistake after reading aloud my name and phone number, he also said that I was one of the only people he needed to contact on that particular day, and specifically, the only female. Case file number 893, written by Eraser100, my ninja cat. Okay, so after dinner, I experienced the single most obvious and inexplicable glitch of my life. As she usually does, my cat came upstairs after feeding her dinner and hung out in the kitchen while I ate, patiently waiting for her cat treat. I give her the treat and pet her as she's laying under the table, and then go downstairs for some gaming. I get down there and she's at the water bowl. I could see her from the stairs where she was laying on my way down. She could not have passed me with how well lit it was, and I would have heard her too if she bolted that quickly. But there she was. Dumbfounded, I look back upstairs and she's gone from the table, so she had to have glitched or teleported down there in maybe 5 seconds from when I saw her upstairs to when I saw her downstairs. Creepy File Number 72 Written by Katakisis His name was Charles I am a member of a website that posts pictures of gravestones for people. One day, a picture was requested of a very old gravestone in a graveyard walking distance from my house, so I agreed to take it. I walked there, found the grave, and stood over the almost 200-year-old grave to see if it was the grave I was looking for, considering how degraded the stone was. And then, my foot sank, into the grave, up to my hip. I nearly passed out. I was sure that something was going to grab my foot. It took me several minutes to get free and I very nearly lost my shoe. I was sobbing when I was done. That night, I had an extremely vivid dream that I still remember. I was talking to a Civil War soldier on a battlefield. He was telling me about his life and apologizing for scaring me. He told me to call him Charlie. The next day, I went up to the church to let them know about the collapsed grave. They looked it up on their map to make sure which one it was. I am absolutely serious when I say this. He was a soldier who was killed in the Civil War. His first name was Charles. Bonus File, written by Cobain is Dead, Ghostly Steps. I was cleaning my upstairs bathroom when my younger brother came upstairs and said nothing, just went into the bedroom. I called out to him, Yo, can you take your shower now? He didn't respond, so I called out again. Still no response. So now, slightly angry that he was ignoring me, I marched into the bedroom, and then my heart skipped. He wasn't there. That was when I kind of started freaking out. I ran down the stairs to the dining room and started hysterically rambling to my parents about how my brother had just disappeared. And then they laughed. Your brother is in the kitchen, my dad said, putting his fork down. Are you seeing ghosts? Maybe our house is haunted, my mom quipped. As soon as she said that, my brother walked past me, and then I saw he was wearing completely different clothes from the clothes I saw him wearing upstairs. It took a while for me to calm down, and I had insomnia for a while after that. Case file number 894, written by That Girl Throw Away AC. I can see through the universe. I regularly travel in and out of one of the major US airports, going to keep it private for my own privacy. Most of the time that I spend at this airport is during a long layover which allows me time to wander through the airport as it's something that I enjoy doing. I have found that there is one terminal that I love as it was recently remodeled so I spend a lot of time in it. I specifically love this terminal because the bathrooms are always extremely clean and have full length stalls allowing for a lot of privacy. I traveled out of this airport a few weeks ago and the bathrooms were as I know them, clean, full length stalls. On my way back from my destination, I went to make a pit stop at said bathroom after a long flight. To my surprise, the bathrooms are as they used to be before the remodel, very run down, short metal stalls, your typical public restroom. I was extremely confused and thought that I had gone to the wrong bathroom somehow, but upon further inspection, I always have a lot of time on my hands in the airport. All of the bathrooms in said terminal were the same. I felt like I was going crazy. Well, I am currently back at this airport again for another trip. I go to my favorite terminal and decide to go to the bathroom. The bathroom is back in its pristine, new, remodeled, full-length stall condition. 
<laughs> I'm utterly confused. I suppose there could be a reasonable explanation somehow out there, but everything I come up with just doesn't make any sense. Case file number 895, written by Anonymous, The Magical Bathtub. Howdy, it's 4.45 a.m. I woke up a few minutes ago, but not a slow wake up. I literally jolted out of bed. I heard a sound of water rushing, but I live in a four bedroom apartment and my window is cracked, so it took me a second to place the sound. I got up to investigate and realized the sound was coming from my own attached bathroom. My garden tub had overflowed and the water was still pouring out of the faucet. I had gone to bed at 12.15 am. I know this because I obviously remembered that, but to back it up I had unopened texts from 12.32. No alcohol or drugs or any medications I haven't already been taking for months. Prescribed anti-anxiety. So, no mind-altering substance would explain this. No history of sleepwalking either. The tub had overflowed and the floor around it was wet, but it hadn't spread past the base of the tub. This makes me think the faucet had only been running for long enough to fill the tub and spill over a little. That definitely would not take four hours. If I had turned it on before bed and gone to sleep, then I definitely didn't do that. What the hell just happened? Maybe sleepwalking? I have no prior history of sleepwalking myself, but my cousin does. I will be getting a camera set up to check this out. Some people have asked me to look into carbon monoxide levels in my apartment unit, which I will be doing tomorrow, just to be safe. We have many smoke alarms, but I am unaware if they measure carbon monoxide as well. It's 12.25 a.m. right now, and I will be going to sleep soon, so we shall see if anything weird happens again. Case file number 896, written by Spattenberg. Do cats possess supernatural powers? Background. I have a young cat who is really smart and really naughty. She is allowed outside during the day, but she's also afraid of birds, so she prefers it if me or my partner are outside with her. However, she really wants to be out at night, so bad, and she knows she's not allowed. She used to try to bolt if the door was opened even for a second, but we wise up to her and now she tries to be stealthy. It doesn't work on me because I've got her number, but my partner can be oblivious sometimes and she'll take the opportunity to slip out. I like to read, smoke and drink on the back deck at night, and there's a huge glass panel door that she can jealously watch me through. Sometimes, she stays by the door the entire time, especially when the moths are out, but sometimes she gets bored and goes to her spot on the couch. And now for story time. One night I'm out reading and drinking, and I hear a soft thump on the deck. I look up and there she is, that little rat. I start scolding her for being out at night, assuming my partner accidentally let her out. And she ignores me doing her usual routine of standing up on her haunches and smelling this particular spot on the wall. It's an unusual posture and it looks really funny and distinctive. As I'm still scolding her, she meanders under the table just out of my reach. I look under but she seems to have disappeared into the shadows. I know she'll eventually want to come back in so I don't pursue her, that just makes her stay away. So I get up and go and refill my drink and berate my partner. And what do I see? She's in her spot on the couch, completely passed out asleep. I start yelling for my partner and she wakes up slightly, looking at me through drowsy eyes. I saw her outside less than two minutes ago and my partner said they hadn't gone out at all recently. I wondered if it was a cat who looked just like her, but she's so distinct down to her extra hangry primordial pouch and silly little quirks. And clearly the cat outside knew me and was comfortable with me as well. We also don't have many strays around here because we border the wilderness and they can't survive. I know all of my neighbor's cats and they definitely don't look or act like mine. Case notes for file 850. I was in two places at once? Yeah, there's a fair bit to unpack here. If this was just an alternate reality crossover event, then why did your brother remember your mom saying goodnight twice? She's unsure she did that, she doesn't think she did. So your brother was out of phase as well in some context. And then your brother saw you where you weren't either, sitting at the kitchen table. There's a lot going on here where there's a jumbled perceptions involved. I don't think there's any quantum immortality here. I think there was some sort of local distortion that enabled all three of you to see into other universes without actually physically being there. 
And so in this distorted area, you are seeing other universes where, you know, there aren't major differences, but in one universe you could be sitting at the kitchen table, in another you were in the bathroom, and the transition between them in terms of perception, well, you're not actually there, it's just signals reaching us. And in that context, you know, light can travel pretty quickly as we know, so the transition is very quick and seamless, and it applies for sound as well, which is just pressure waves in the atmosphere. Again, it's all just information, reverberations in the various fields and elements around us. I think this universal peering as I like to call it now, can explain a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of glitches that we experience, déjà vu perhaps as well, or either glitches in the buffered reality or alternate timelines, other universes that we're seeing without actually having to physically travel there. It could even account for doppelganger sightings as well. But not if you're seeing them at the same time, only if they're in different spots. If you're seeing them at the same time, there would be something else than universal peering. But no one saw each other in this uh, story at the same time. It's all just in different locations that the original person, you or your mom or your brother, didn't believe they were at. Case notes for file 851. Lost contacts re-emerge. Right, I mean, I'm not surprised that the contacts were returned. Actually, the contacts being returned in this case is curious, because they're not especially high value, and I don't think returning them would have any meaningful impact in the long-term course of your life, because you have other cases, you have other contacts, so you'd get along fine without them. So it kind of throws a wrench in my theory. When items are returned, I think they probably have some high value or importance to the person's life. That's why either the server developer that returns them or the ghost spirit entity that does travel long distance to find the person it belongs to, they would only do that if it has any relevance. I mean, if it's just a tennis ball in my case or a contact case in yours, why return it? It doesn't really affect anything. So I think along with all the intentional returns, there are just random spurts in the universe. We know actually in quantum mechanics that matter can spawn from nothing. Now this is happening all over the place, all the time. We call this the quantum foam, where tiny virtual particles we call them, they're real in the sense that they exist, they're reverberations in the fields of reality, but they annihilate each other because they're formed in pairs and they instantly collide and one is anti, the other is n normal, and that creates an annihilation. Now, it is in theory possible for nothing to spawn something, given enough time. Part of it is energy, the universe has to be in equilibrium and energy balance, so if an item is dematerialized, de-rendered from the universe, you could account it for a certain amount of information that's lost, taken out of RAM I guess you could say. And then restoring that, well it's just occupying the same amount of space, RAM, energy that it had before. It fits perfectly fine with what I understand about reality and physics as we know it. It could be done. We don't have the technology to de-render an item or dematerialize it, convert it all to energy and then back into matter, but it isn't impossible, it's within the realm of physics that would allow this. Case notes for the bonus file. When a ghost bear attacks. What a cool little story, and very peculiar, and that yeah it does seem like the bear is what attacked you, but obviously it didn't come into the room and actually scratch you in the room, because I think other people would have noticed a bear wandering inside a hotel and then breaking into a room. They open the door and then uh, close the door, lock the door, I don't, I don't think that happened. So there is another possibility that it's not just some astral projection from the bear. Maybe you sleepwalked outside and the bear was by the bins trying to rummage for food, saw you, swiped at you, and obviously you're still sleepwalking so then you go back inside and lay back in. That's the only mundane explanation I can think of. If you have a history of sleepwalking, it's possible and maybe likely even, but if it's not that, maybe indeed the bear somehow projected its essence and spirit into the room and started swiping. I don't know why it would do that though, maybe some sort of uh, aggressive behavior to buffer and ward people away from what it thought was a jackpot of uh, food. I guess it also poses a question of, are animals sentient and to what degree? I think we all agree that trees aren't sentient, their plants can be... Um, intelligent, they can react to stimuli, but they're not self-aware to what we understand requires a brain, but how developed does that brain have to be? Technically it's impossible to prove that anyone else is even sentient, I don't know, maybe you could all be uh, programs of the, uh, the matrix and I'm the only real player. Probably not, uh, but there's no way to confirm that. All we can go on is assumptions based on brain matter and brain waves and how 
complex they are. So could a bear be sentient? Absolutely. And in that case, if there's sentience, I think there's will. And if there's will, there could be an imprint or echo or essence. I guess you can call it a soul that can traverse beyond the physical body, the connection to the character from another place. Case notes for file 852, the final words of my canine friend. What the hell is going on there? People are just randomly poisoning stray dogs? If you have too many strays, it can cause havoc for food supplies, other pets in the area, but still, just poisoning them? It's heartless. Horrific. I'm so sorry for your loss. It is curious regarding his last whimper. It seems like he was trying to give you a signal of where his body was. I do think he had already died and his echo was still left behind, which I do think that even our pets and other animals can leave behind an imprint. And that imprint didn't want his body to just decompose behind a bush, never to be found. So I think he was just trying to make sure that you knew what happened to him. And regarding the second glitch, it's interesting. I mean, I don't know that much about planes. I do know that they're able to change the back end of the shape, um, flaps, I think they're called. But the actual shape of the wing is always curved, and it's curved outward from the plane. Sort of, yeah, like V-shape reversed. If you're looking at the plane going forward, it's a reverse V. Straight wings. I think there are some smaller planes that have straight wings, but it's always usually a bit curved. If it was the same type of plane, the same uh, size, then there's some possibility there was a glitch here. But it may not be a glitch, it might just be design philosophy for different plane types. I know that physics would probably be the same in all universes that still have people in them, because physics have to be so tightly regulated in order for anything to exist. Like if the speed of light was even slightly faster, all the mechanics of the universe wouldn't work anymore. So we wouldn't even have matter. So this one's unclear to me. Might be a glitch, maybe it is quantum immortality and you're in a new universe and there's a slight difference. And it could even be possible that people jump often, where people are dying more frequently than we might imagine otherwise. And as a result, you get more of these anomalies. And they're back to back. Like you could switch from one anomaly back to the original. It doesn't mean you're back in that original universe, you're just in a new one that doesn't have that same anomaly. Case okay, so notes for file 853. When life grants lemons and glitches. Okay, this is kind of funny. Now the aliens are coming for our lemon trees. Hey, can't blame them, you know? Make lemonade, not bad. Fresh squeeze of lemon juice in uh, chili. Secret sauce. Also, add a few uh, dark chocolate chips in there. You'll be amazed at the richness and depth that your new chili takes on. Pro tip. But yeah, this is a tiny glitch, but it can't be ignored. Originally there was one. Then it was gone, which could, you know, presumably be from the wind knocking it off or something like that. You bring it inside, still only has one flower bud. You go to bed, you wake up, and there's two. To my knowledge, they don't sprout that fast. I'm not a gardener, so maybe that's wrong. But assuming they don't sprout that fast, yeah, that's definitely a glitch. Even if it's a tiny thing, it can't just appear from nowhere. Not supposed to anyways, right? As they say, the devil is in the details. Case notes for the bonus file. It's all in the name. This does pique my curiosity. As you say, the knowledge was hidden almost to yourself. You had to actually rack your brain a bit for it to make any sense. That it was your original mother's maiden name, not her, the new one she took on after the stepfather came into the picture. So the idea that it was maybe your suppressed memory, subconscious, that's conceivable. It certainly wouldn't be a prank because no one else could know. And especially because that information would probably not be uh, available online. It would just give you... Uh, your mother's current maiden name, not the original one. Most likely. I mean, maybe it's possible to find. But would teenagers around that age be willing and able to find that information? All for a prank that they never reveal as a prank? Eh, I won't discount it. It just doesn't seem likely. So was it an entity related to your mother that just trying to say hello? They're all just possibilities though. I wouldn't say I'm sold either way on this one. It's hard to say. Case notes for file 854. From disorder emerges a glitch in the matrix. So as I was reading the story, the uh, thoughts were forming in my head that, yeah, okay, maybe this was just some disgruntled employee that was working there, maybe a cleaning person that was mistreated or something, and they wanted revenge. However, of course, as the story progresses and the, the mouse pad and mouse come back in almost real time, well, what happened there? The cleaning lady was hiding somewhere, you didn't notice her, she returned the mouse and mouse pad, which, why would you steal that anyways? It's almost, it's worth, they're so cheap, it's, it's inconsequential. So she returns that, 
and then you still don't notice her and then they're there. I don't, I don't buy that. That doesn't make any sense to me. It isn't impossible, I just would not stake any money on that theory. We can always account for SADS, uh, sudden adult death syndrome. People just are dying randomly, so maybe that happened to you. The disorder was caused by a disgruntled employee, but the mouse and mouse pad weren't stolen. Or they were from the in the original universe, you died and then you're in a new one, and there was still a disgruntled employee that uh, messed the whole office up and was hiding somewhere, so as to not to trigger the alarm. But they didn't steal the mouse and mouse pad. Still, I don't know if that fits either, because it's just so inconsequential. Why steal something like that? Instead of a computer or something that has some value, you know, a couple hundred bucks for that. A mouse, mouse pad, you might get ten bucks for that? Reselling it? I don't buy it. I suppose we can just chalk it up to the chaos of the universe. Maybe some glitches are just that. Total random chaos. Fitting for this glitch. Case notes for the creepy file number 68. Cosmo, the champion defender. So I have to say I actually found this somewhat humorous even though I know in the moment it would be kinda terrifying. But just the, I, the image in my head of this well-dressed young man knocking on your door and then running away and being picked up by this super aggressive team of Kirby vacuum salesmen, it's like the whole image is just so hilarious to me. Now most likely they were just posing as salesmen of some sort, they probably wanted to steal your stuff. I wouldn't wager money on that, but still, you know, they, they really had to meet their quota, let's just say that. <laughs> Sell those vacuums, man. Take care of the disorder from the previous glitch. <laughs> But you have one hell of a good dog. Give Cosmo a treat for me. He deserves it. Case notes for file 855. The time when reality slowed to half speed. You are correct that adrenaline can supercharge our brains. Um, that would be the best way to put it. So it reacts faster to stimuli. It's all in perception as well. It's like the hummingbird will perceive reality moving slower just because its neurons are firing faster for that specific part of processing. Also the case for houseflies, which is why you can't really swat them away easily. Everything we do, even a very quick slap, is extremely slow to them. And also they react to the change in air pressure, which is a neat advantage for them. Very annoying. But as you correctly point out, adrenaline shouldn't be responsible for anything remotely like this. I mean, I've had high bursts of adrenaline as well, and yeah, time does seem to sort of slow down a bit. But as you describe it, half speed. And it clearly was an actual temporal anomaly because even the voice from your girlfriend was slowed down significantly. Uh, to that extent, yeah. <laughs> if a woman's voice becomes Darth Vader, you know something weird is going on. <laughs> Definitely must have been a temporal anomaly. Very odd though that it only seemed to affect you, not your then girlfriend, now wife, or anyone else in the restaurant. So why was it isolated purely to you? I don't know. That's very peculiar. Case notes for file 856. The pulsating reality. So I like that you're trying to figure it out, offering solutions like a gas leak or something like that, or medical issues, but Sometimes deductive logic doesn't get us all the way there because there are variables we don't know to deduct. And that's the one flaw of deductive reasoning. For Sherlock and everyone else, if there's variables you simply don't know and can't infer, it's not going to help you get there. What makes me think this is so interesting is that you perceived a geometry that wasn't quite compatible with reality and yet still fit in, but everyone else noticed an anomaly but didn't notice the geometry. It's like your brain was able to perceive at a higher dimensional level, at least slightly, more than anyone else. Something in the environment unlocked this view, I guess you could say. For some, they could appreciate it and perceive it like you, and others, they couldn't. And I think to perceive it at that level required more brain power, which is why you felt lightheaded after. And it also points out the fact that our brains operates on a lot of fundamental axioms and uh, assumptions, I guess you could say, algorithms. It reminds me often of that white and gold dress or blue and black. The dress was really blue and black, but because of the lighting and uh, different environmental cues that our brains automatically infer as variables, some people would perceive it. I think it was 30% would perceive it as white and gold. I saw a video that mentioned that a study done comparing the differences between those that saw it black and blue versus white and gold, those that saw it white and gold had a difference in pupil size. So there was an actual physical difference involved. It's not just perception, but also the amount of information being received, and that can be processed. So ultimately, yeah, I think there was some anomaly in the environment that enabled anyone in the area 
the opportunity to witness at a higher dimensional level, but not everyone's brain was capable, but yours was at least to some extent. And as a result, you perceive this geometry that didn't quite fit, and everyone else just saw kind of like blurred pixels. That's an apt way to describe it by your gamer friend. Case notes for file 857. For a day, no one existed. Yeah, so this is sort of like being pulled into the world of I Am Legend, minus the extremely powerful and terrifying zombies, so that's a plus. Now, was this purgatory? I don't think so. I think if something like purgatory or hell exists, there certainly wouldn't be bright sunny days involved and electricity still functioning. That is the most interesting aspect to this, the anomaly there of there was electricity involved still uh, operational in the city, yet the cell service wasn't. Or I guess maybe the cell service was, wherever this place was, it's just that your phone wasn't compatible with the network. But I guess everything was functional. It's sort of like you were in a transient state between two parallel universes, where you were still interacting with the world, it's just that your device wasn't compatible with that universe's code that's required to connect to the network. Yours didn't have it because it's different in this parallel universe, even though everything was more or less the same. And I think people were there, it's just that you weren't able to see or physically, you were basically a, a kind of ghost or echo, transient between universes, but still able to interact with matter. You made a coffee, and your uh, roommates saw that it was cold, so you really did make it, and you had the cup and the coffee in it, you really did take a shower, and you were stuck between universes. I guess you could sort of call that purgatory, but not in a biblical sense, I don't think it was a punishment, I think it was a mistake, an error. Case notes for file 858, the glitch that saved my life. Well, I just want to say that I'm glad that you pulled and pushed through the muck. You know, life can sometimes beat us down. We all have problems, but sometimes people have bigger problems than others. Uh, of course, being abused in a relationship is terrible. Could put anyone down, for sure. But you pulled through, and I think maybe there was some sort of intervention involved. A guardian angel, or a protector from the uh, real universe that just didn't want you to switch universes now or completely exit the game. Maybe you had to carry on for some reason. I think we're all on a learning journey here. That's why we're playing the game. And we have many things to learn. Hmm. Case notes for file 859. My mom left a message that she doesn't remember. I think signals or energy has a much easier time to permeate through the uh, barrier between universes than physical matter. So I think this was a real message, a real burst of information that was received by the phone that was damaged for some reason that maybe made it easier to receive the signal. It was from a different universe where your mom maybe wasn't with your dad and was at a festival and maybe they were still friends so she was just calling to inform him. I think that's the easiest explanation that I can think of. Hope she had a good time at the Hummingbird Festival. <laughs> cool name. Case notes for file 860. My daughter Sippy Cup was sewn into a couch. This one is really strange. Because yeah, it's disappearing object phenomena, which is common, but then it was it reappeared within the couch. So did an entity steal it, dematerialize it, or deface it, and then reface it within the couch? This doesn't strike me as intentional, it strikes me as a complete error. Maybe this happens frequently. Maybe objects are being returned to us, it's just that they're not always in the proper spot. Maybe they're rematerializing inside walls or under the foundation or inside the earth itself and we just don't know. You know, something is trying to return it or it's just the code is made to return it, correct errors, but it's not perfect. So sometimes it'll reappear in weird places. <laughs> Maybe my tennis ball will come back in a carton of milk. <laughs> That'd be funny. I don't think I'll sue the manufacturer for that. Case notes for the bonus file. The woman with black eyes. That is certainly disturbing, that this occurred next to such a creepy house with such a deeply bloody history. It could indeed just be some woman that looks creepy. The fact that you mentioned she had black eyes is the creepiest element to this. Obviously, some people do have black eyes, but eh, maybe you just couldn't see it properly from the angle and a distance at a distance. Hopefully this was just uh, someone being mistaken for being creepy and not an actual spirit that was giving you the death stare. Cause that, you don't want that. <laughs> Hello folks, looks like my Santa had arrived. Nice. Case notes for file 861. The mysterious case of the vanishing passenger. 
It seems like the anomalies start mid-ride, where you say that the conversation that you hear in the background sort of becomes muddied, and also you lose navigational ability, sort of like you're in a transitioning phase along the drive. Curious though, because if this was a case of quantum immortality, normally the transition is seamless. Or if you do remember something, it's actually the death that you remember, which is kind of hard to gloss over, I would say. The one thing I can think of is if it is a seamless transition, and maybe it wasn't a death exactly, it was just some random spurt from the universe, I think there's a lag period if the universe you're going to is far away. I think the closer it is, the more seamless it'll feel because it's just instantaneous basically. But if the universe you're going to is far away, then there's a time lag that creates this muddied effect. It might even explain the uh, period of transition where people are stuck in limbo, in worlds where no one exists at all. They're like in a temporary server that would be eliminated after their transition. This would indeed explain why there was only one girl at the end. There were two in the original universe, and then just one in the new universe. Case notes for the creepy file number 69. Unwanted visitors. I mean, the first part about the homeless man seems pretty benign overall, just some guy chilling out. Maybe homeless? I would have been cautious as well and definitely want him to leave. The second story is indeed uh, more hilarious. Kind of reminds me sort of of the story I read where there were a group of four people trying to sell vacuum salesmen, the Kirby vacuum salesmen. In this case, it's just a group of very professional, faithful, devout Russian men. <laughs> what a weird thing where these people are knocking on doors and they're... They have a lot of character, I guess you could say. Yeah. Those are my notes for tonight. I hope everyone's enjoying the festive times. I know I'm playing a lot of holiday music myself. Always gets me in the mood. Can't wait for Christmas. Gotta set up my tree. Case notes for file 862. Driving a loop that doesn't exist. So it is common in these car glitches to either go forward or backwards in time or space. Typically not both together, which is an interesting glitch in of itself. Now all that said, if you can be pushed forward in time or in space, like if there's a wormhole and you're passing through it without realizing it's seamless, there's no visual cue to it, and then you're just ahead in space-time. No time has really passed. There's no reason why you couldn't do that the opposite way. A wormhole doesn't have to carry you forward in the vector of your travel. It could just be back or in a different place you could appear in Australia, driving in the ocean. <laughs> that would be unfortunate. Case notes for file 863. The notes written into the universe. So disappearing object phenomena can happen to anything. When an object simply is de-rendered, the universe loses track of it in a sense, of the data of where it's supposed to be. And it doesn't matter where they are, they could de-render even when they're out of sight, like in a landfill or something. And then they can reappear wherever the universe has connected it to be. And I think typically we're assigned ownership within the universe, uh, things that are supposed to belong to us. I guess the universe considered the sticky notes to belong to you. Unless there was an actual entity that returned it to you, but I wonder why. What possible reason could you need to be reminded of the sticky notes? Maybe to think about your sister again? Maybe for some reason, thinking about your sister in that moment was extremely important to your overall life journey. Case notes for file 864. My wealth is linked to the universe. So this is an interesting glitch that could be mundane. Uh, it could just be a tech glitch where it's an actual anomaly within the systems we've built, not the universe. Honestly, the uh, complexity of computers and the financial networks that we all depend on is so immensely complex that it borders on the realm of mysticism. Most people involved in it, the single person, couldn't tell you exactly how it all works. It's all an interconnected web of complexity and variables and abstraction. It's really impressive. Still, what you describe should not be possible, especially given that the cards aren't even of the same country. There's entire region codes built into the card numbers. There's no way one could be confused for another, even if they were nearby each other. Even the chips themselves have built-in security measures. There's security checks that are built into uh, the process of verification when you enter your code, or even without it, even if it's a small purchase and it happens without entering your code, there's still back-end processes that are verifying that this is a legitimate transaction. Indeed, it really was processed as if it was your American credit card and you got a notification on your phone stating as such. So I don't know how that could happen. Honestly, outside of some actual glitch in the matrix, that the universe glitches out being more 
probable than an actual human tech glitch. It's kind of funny, but I think it's true. <laughs> Case notes for the bonus file. The Working Man Ghost. Well, this is a complete little story. I love it. You have the uh, wife completing your own thoughts and describing the ghost as you saw it, so you know she really did see it. Unless it's some kind of prankster imposter that's just breaking into their home and appearing as an entity and then leaving. Okay, I mean, I, I like prank videos, but that's taking it a bit too far. And I wouldn't place my money on that being the case. I do think it's an actual spirit. And yeah, like you said, a plumber did die there before. So I guess he's lingering on. Too many pipes to fix. And you know, I kind of want to go watch the um, old Mario and Luigi movie. I know everyone thinks it's terrible, but for me it's just, it's just terrible fun, I guess you could say. I love the actor that plays Mario. He fits it very well. And you know, it's just a classic adventure movie. It doesn't have to be brilliant in its writing or anything or plot. It just has to be fun. I think we're missing fun in modern movies. Do you know what I mean? Case notes for file 865, Riding the Wave of Time. I'm labeling these types of glitches as universal peering, universal observation you could say as well. I think it explains a lot of glitches actually. So think about a pedestrian that's looking to cross a road, looks both ways, even multiple times and sees nothing, and then crosses the road and then immediately there's a car right there about to hit him. This happens quite frequently, and also for drivers. Now what's going on there? Are they just blind? They just miss the car barreling towards them? Probably not. What's probably happening is they're actually looking, but the light waves that they're receiving are from a different parallel universe. And in those universes, most things are the same, but in just one case, there's no car coming towards them. But then their perception returns to the normal world, and the light in that world says, hey, there's a car right there. You're gonna die. <laughs> React. So I think it explains quite a few things, and often mundane things are mundane. I think it could also play into the role of buffered reality. So you're seeing events as they were in a different universe, but buffered ahead as well. It's all just information that's out there in various servers of the simulation. So that data could presumably enter our minds. Why not? As long as we're able to process it. Case notes for file 866. No smoking. So first off, I would just want to say that um, congratulations on quitting smoking. You and your wife. Very good achievement and... You know, it's, it's on par with uh, being very overweight and losing the weight in terms of health improvement over the long term. You literally are saving probably a decade or more on your life. And not just that, but a better life. You know, you might live, some people live, they smoke or they're overweight and they live a long time, but they're not in good health. They can't live a full life doing what they want to do even though they're alive. So it's not just years lived, it's better years as well. Now as far as the glitches, well... It is entirely possible that this is all just some giant coincidence. As you say, the lighter was especially cheap and you were opening beer cans with it. So, you know, not every synchronicity or, you know, coincidence has to be a glitch. However, if you really think about it, it does seem to be so well attuned for your life, right? Things just fall into place and it could be the case, you know. Maybe the universe just decided that or maybe it was just lucky on your part. And I mean, it really would be lucky in that case because it made you quit smoking. I've had it happen before where I'm listening to a podcast. The very second I walk back home into the door, the podcast is over. And it's just a coincidence, I'm pretty sure. It has no real significance. It's just interesting how that happens. But that happening as well as a cigarette lighter just popping? Huh. I mean, it's pretty rare for those to explode, even if you bang them up a bit. Make of it what you will, but I'm really glad that it inspired you to quit smoking. Case notes for file 867. Visuals and audio desynchronize in real life. So I've also had moments in my life where it felt like reality wasn't exactly synced, especially in the audio department. I've always just chalked it up to being sleep deprived as uh, your great kinetic symphony often is. <laughs> it is what it is. Coffee fuels me. There can certainly be cases where things aren't aligning perfectly and we might just chalk it up towards being tired. Now, if you weren't tired or under the influence of anything, well, yeah, maybe it was... Just more evidence of the universe being on the fritz, at least our universe. Hopefully we switch servers soon, because uh, seems to be a bit unstable, huh? Case notes for file 868. Classic quantum immortality. So, meaning that your husband didn't notice anything, somehow you're the only one who died in the car. Or, he jumped as well, but to a different universe. And I, I've been wondering that for quite a while. People are connected by, you know, physical distance, or 
rather emotional connection, a bond of friendship or love, are they then transported to a, the same parallel universe when they die, through quantum immortality? I like to hope that they do. It's kinda neat in a way, right? If uh, two people die, to have that universal bond baked within the universe itself. Nice. Usually the glitches I've read indicate this, but maybe not all the time. Or maybe he didn't die as well. I mean, you're in a car, but it doesn't necessarily mean if you get into a crash that both people will die. Sometimes one person does and the other doesn't. That could explain it. Case notes for the bonus file. To Tyler, the best friend in the multiverse. Wow, what a story. I just want to say first off that I'm very sorry for your loss and really, you shouldn't blame yourself. I know it's hard not to, survivor's guilt, but it's not your fault. You were just having a decent night with your wife and you know, like you say, you're not in that environment anymore of partying and drinking. It's uh, very sad what happened, it really is, but it's not your fault. I just hope you know that now. I think maybe that's what Tyler wanted you to understand, you know, he's in a better place now and he doesn't blame you in any way. Now as to whether this was an actual message from Tyler or just your mind conjuring up a scenario that would give you that closure that you desperately want, my gut instinct does say that it was indeed Tyler. As we're dreaming, the interface to higher dimensions, to other realms, maybe even parallel universes is more open, I guess you could say. So those would be the moments where something higher level would interact with us. Most people think that when we're dreaming, the brain calms down and winds down, but actually it's the opposite. The brain becomes more active, more engaged, trying to make sense of the prior days and weeks events and organize them, determine what to keep in memory and what to discard and just making sense of the world. So it is a time where there'd be moments to talk, let's say. Could all of that ensemble of chaos trying to be organized be influenced by some other entity? I, I think so, absolutely. It makes sense too in the way that he showed you, through humor, crude as it may be, and through beautiful vistas of the games you used to play together. Breath of the Wild is indeed beautiful. That opening cinematic where you're showing the world that you can explore is really cool. Case notes for file 869, The Mysterious Echo of Time. It is peculiar that no one reacted to time repeating itself in the presentation aspect of this glitch. I'm wondering, was it only your own perception that repeated? If reality is buffered as I believe it is, then it's possible that the interface to reality could be jumbled sometimes. It's like watching a live stream where you're watching live with others, but if you pause it and then play it again or rewind it, you can recommence scenes that already happened, even though other people are still watching it live. And then you can just fast forward a bit to catch up. I think something similar like that could happen sometimes when we're facing deja vus or even entire scenes that are just repeated. No one else reacted, so unless, you know, it is possible that everyone experienced it as well, but they didn't want to seem crazy. So that's the other possible explanation, is that people experience glitches all the time, but they just don't want to mention because, you know, I don't want to go to the loony bin. <laughs> Understandable to an extent, right? It could also explain why there's so many accounts now, where in the past, I mean, where could you anonymously publish your experiences of weird and mysterious events? It would be hard to do. The first part of this glitch though is much more pronounced to me in that it is just a pure time anomaly. Obviously you can't shower, use the bathroom, do all that stuff in, well, a minute. It's just not possible. There's another story about someone that went into Subway, ordered a sandwich and came back out in like a few seconds, even though it should at least take two or three minutes. This is that, but taken to, you know, a higher level. Well, yeah, there's no way that it only took a minute to do all that. So there was just a time anomaly. No doubt about it. Case notes are file 870. I was recognized from another world. So I've personally read at least five stories where people interact with each other, they never met, and yet seemingly they know each other from uh, just past lives. Sometimes they even know details of each other's lives. Sometimes I think there's a connection to past lives, maybe uh, other game saves where the souls are connected even though the events in the physical world aren't. However, I think in this case the most likely explanation is quantum immortality. The person there died and was in a new universe, she didn't know that of course, and then just approached you because in that universe she probably knows you, maybe as an acquaintance or something. In that universe you worked somewhere else in the past. That could explain how she knew you or thought she did. She did but in a different universe so uh, first time's always jarring. Or outside of glitches, maybe you just have one of those faces. Case notes for file 871. My dad from another universe. So yeah, I think if this is quantum immortality, it's your dad that died and is now 
it's still your dad, right? Just from a different universe. The blending occurred. And in that case, the fact that he's a righty, I mean, it, ultimately, it's not about physical matter, right? If you're right or left-handed, it's just about your brain's wiring and how it uses the body. So if someone is a lefty in one universe and a righty in another, and then they fuse together, well, one would override the other, whichever is more dominant. Or maybe even they become ambidextrous and they don't even realize it. You know, maybe your dad can use his right hand as well. He just doesn't realize it. Maybe have him try to use it and who knows, he may be able to without understanding how because he never trained in this universe but the uh, copy of himself that carried over did. It's actually a very interesting concept. If we die in one universe, transposed into another body, we sort of have life experience and whatever is different from one universe to another in terms of skills acquired or ability would be infused. There's some people that wake up one day and they're just good at math. Or they're just talented in some way where they weren't the day before. What's happening in their brains to accommodate that? Well, maybe it's just their soul was infused by another one that was from a different universe that had that ability. And now they do as well. The blending occurred. It's like uh, Piccolo fusing with Nail in Dragon Ball Z if you ever saw the anime. They're just combined. Now, you don't have your own voice as like a second voice in your head. I don't know if there's any limit to how many times this could happen. Maybe you die of very often from some singular event in many other universes and they all occupy now your one vessel and now you're just this booming powerful vessel that has so many latent potential that you may not even be aware of. Maybe you're bad at writing or maybe you're bad at uh, graphic design or driving but one day you're not and you wouldn't even know unless you tried again. So if you were bad at something in the past, maybe try it again just to see, you know, maybe you're good now. <laughs> Case notes for file 872. The mystery of the thin straw. So yeah, could this be a crossover event? Sure, it's possible. Uh, tiny differences like the straw not being there could happen. Could be possible that it was just blown away by something and or maybe someone else took it. The theft of a straw isn't exactly the most mind-blowing thing, but who knows. I do think we're switching universes very frequently, so it's within the realm of possibility, one of the cards that could be played by the universe. Either way, she eventually was able to enjoy the uh, shake, so nice. Case notes for file 873. The world ended on Thanksgiving. So in these cases where the world seemingly just stops, goes dead, you're the only one alive, or at least the only one you're able to perceive. I remember the first story I read about this, where it was just a kid that was stuck in his own home, or rather he awoke in his home. Just a normal day, but no one was around. And he couldn't hear any sounds from anyone else, it was completely dead, a dead world. And it lasted the entire day for him. More recently there was a similar story, uh, but it was an adult in a city. I don't remember if the kid had to go to bed first, before things were restored. And now in this story, you didn't have to sleep at all, it only lasted a couple minutes, maybe five minutes. What is causing people to transition? In their perception or is it their entire soul that is being pulled to another universe? Maybe it is simply the distance they're being pulled to. If it's a really far universe, maybe it requires many hours or even a mental reset of sleep. But that would be my impression, that your soul was literally stuck in limbo, a temporary dead server that's meant just to occupy you for a brief period of time because I guess you can't occupy nothing. You have to be in some universe even during the transition process. It's like the, the data is being copied, take some time to transfer it, a greater distance. Something like that. Case notes for file 874, the best friend I've never met. My guess in connection to this is simply real world connections. So in the real world, we probably have friends. Think of it like going to the arcade. Back in the 90s, you know, you'd go to the arcade with your friend and goof around, try to beat each other's high scores and all that. Well, Think of the real world in this context, the simulation we're playing, as a very advanced kind of arcade that suppresses your memory of the real world. It's the only way it can work. If this is true, then presumably we could still have friends in the real world, or at least people we know and have connected with deeply. And I think our souls, they resonate with that. And I guess soul is just a way to say the real brain that we have in the real world those real memories, they may not be accessible consciously to us, but subconsciously, they're still there. So we're able to connect with other people, sort of soulmates I guess, or friendmates, and we just know, yeah, this person is important to me. I don't know how, I don't know why, but they are. The only weird thing about the story is the fact that she just 
completely cut off contact with you for no apparent reason. Just one day she didn't like your negative energy? I don't know if something happened before that, but that seems odd. Peculiar. I wonder what happened. Case notes for file 875. You'll need glasses to see this glitch. The only thing I can think of is that somehow one of your family members has a copy of your prescription, broke the pair of glasses that you had bought recently, the new frames, and just reordered a new pair, complete with the frames and lenses, so as to not make you uh, angry or frustrated that they had broken them. But this only is possible if they had a copy of your prescription, or somehow called your optometrist's office and got a copy that way, but I don't think they would share that kind of info with just a random person, even a family member. And as you say, you went to the optometrist and it wasn't their frame. So I don't think this is quantum immortality either. Because they didn't know you, so that was really your optometrist's office. So why would you have gone to a different optometrist to get a different pair of frames that isn't your style? It doesn't really fit. It doesn't seem like it's de-rendered uh, objects just reappearing. It was your prescription, but it wasn't your frames. It's like the universe getting jumbled up and putting an incorrect frame on your lenses? Perhaps. I'm just going to chalk this one up to an eyesight guardian angel. <laughs> that guardian angel truly is looking out for you. Huh? Case notes for file 876, the leaf that proves we live in the matrix. This does feel like the simulation physics are just not loading properly, they're being slowed down, there's a lag effect, and I think that's most notable by the single leaf that's just frozen in place, it's as if that specific object didn't have the physics applied to it. Sometimes you see that in games where a car will just merge into the, the ground or float above it and it doesn't render that, hey, this that's not how gravity works. <laughs> I'd guess if others were in the vicinity, they would have experienced the same thing. However, you combine it with the fact that the world seemed to be dead, almost like in those uh, stories where people experience no one alive, no one around, no cars, no noise. It seems to be a merger of that. I think you may have been in a transition period where you are in a new universe now, these dead pockets, these dead servers, I'm guessing they're not given a lot of computational resources because you're in a transitionary phase, so that server is probably deleted as soon as you leave it. It doesn't really matter at that point. But I do think your memory is supposed to be wiped from these transitory servers. You're not supposed to remember. I wonder why so many people are remembering these experiences. Case notes for file 877. The nap that I never woke from. So a couple points here, the first is that the virus that shall not be named was probably roaming around before it was officially stated to be here, so it's not inconceivable that you had that instead of just a flu. However, the other point is that people do die just from the flu. That's not unheard of at all, thousands of people per year just in the US. Typically older though of course, but it does happen in even younger people. So is it possible you just had the flu? and were visiting New York, went to take a nap, you didn't feel that bad, and then died? You know, actually, if you're sick and you don't have extreme symptoms, I mean, obviously most of the time means that you're just getting better, but sometimes it means that your body's immune system isn't working properly. The symptoms of being sick are actually just your body fighting the virus, you know, stuffy nose, clearing your sinuses, coughing up mucus, or a fever, which is the body trying to kill the virus. All these things are signs of fighting the virus. So if you feel a bit sick and then just immediately clear up, it's like your, vi your, your body's mechanism is not working for some reason. So it's possible that's what happened. You did actually die from just a flu and then you're in a new universe. And really it would be completely seamless if you die in your sleep. You literally just go to bed and wake up and now you're in a new place. That's it. <laughs> I don't know if it's a worse place than where you came from, if things would have turned out the same way. I don't know. All I know is we gotta work to make the future better for all of us. And I do believe we can. Case notes for file 878, Harry Potter magic is real. I think DOP can be summarized as either disappearing object phenomena or duplicating object phenomena. They both can apply and often they happen one after the other. I think the universe's code in storing items, objects and so on isn't perfect. There may be items and objects that are meant to not disappear, but then when the universe understands that they did, they return it. However, it's not perfect. Sometimes it returns it incorrectly or duplicates it. And ultimately, it's just excitations of the various fields of life. Can you duplicate an excitation in a field? Sure. You just need enough energy. 
And I guess if you're coming from the real world, you have all the energy you need to do that. Seems like an error in duplication that was preceded by an error in de-rendering. And yeah, you know, possible to duplicate items, but the one rule is you can't duplicate food. That's the wizarding rule, sadly. I really wish you could. <laughs> Get that spell to duplicate donuts, or just conjure them from nothing. I'd like that. Case notes for file 879. Low frequency terror. So the main issue with determining the source of a low frequency noise, a very deep sound, is that they tend to travel very far. They're kind of muddied sound, but they still travel far. They're kind of pressure waves in a sense. Whereas high frequency, they dissipate really quickly and they're easily blocked by walls and such. Of course, you have the very known hum, which only some people can hear and in some specific locations. Maybe related to gas lines, uh, it's unclear. And then you have sky trumpets, which is another one that's even more eerie if you ask me. Some people speculate that it's related to the end times, that angels are playing their trumpets. I don't know about that, I hope not. <laughs> but it could even be related to shifting tectonic plates and things like that. It's just strange that only some people are able to pick it up. Sensitivity to lower frequencies, I guess. Curious. Case notes for the bonus file. My friendly backrubbing demon. I would guess this is not a demon. If it was a demon, indeed, it would be very friendly and strange. You know, imagine you're you're in the supernatural world and you just come out of hell, you know, being tortured for a thousand years, and then you decide, ah, you know, that was enough bad. Let's just go give some people back rubs that need it. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> More likely, it's just a lonely spirit or echo, something that wants to connect and give back. I guess. And if you think about it, what is the best way to introduce yourself as being a spirit or echo, something beyond the dimension that normal people occupy? Most people aren't going to be, you know, open to that. And they're not like us. They're just seeking out this kind of information that's abnormal. They just want a normal existence. So how do you reveal yourself when you don't know if the person's going to be receptive to that? Make their stress go away. It's not a bad call. Pretty smart, I'd say. I wouldn't mind having a back rubbing spirit. <laughs> Case notes for file 880. Proof that we're immortal. So is this a case of double quantum immortality? In theory, there's nothing that would prevent that. If you die in one universe, and you're transposed to another one, and then in that universe, the same circumstances, or even different circumstances in theory, could happen and trigger your death in that new universe, and then you're sent into another one altogether. In fact, I think it may happen pretty frequently. We're just not aware of it. Maybe not within the span of a couple minutes of being in a new universe, but in general, within days or weeks, yeah, because it's pretty easy to die as a human being. And indeed, there's nothing to say that the new universe has to be safe for you. It's just that we have almost unlimited lives. Hell, it's not inconceivable that you die and re-engage the same death many, 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 many times to such a point that you know how to avoid it, but it may take a lot of attempts. It reminds me of the movie Next where Nicolas Cage towards the end, where he can see into the future, but it's almost like in a way where he's dying and then restarting a few minutes back. It's almost identical to the situation you describe, which could actually play into quantum immortality. He's just seeing different variations of how he could move his body to avoid being shot at. And then eventually he knows exactly the pattern that the armed man is going to use to shoot him. And then he just avoids it perfectly and grabs the gun in that one universe. Of course, that armed man has no idea that he just went through a hundred copies of different scenarios at, at play, and then he found the one where he could navigate it properly. But given that we retain the information from past lives, past universes, it is in a certain sense almost unknown foresight. Could also play into déjà vu. Case notes for file 881. An IQ so high it broke the matrix. So just like the past story, I think it's related, it can be. The ability to foresee the future can depend on when you're transposed into another universe, if we live in a buffered reality as I think we do. In effect, we already made all the choices we're going to make, or at least for a good while, and then we're just here watching the replay. Maybe it is possible to take control, to restart from replay, in a sense, but I think most of the time we're just watching the replay and then we see how things are going based on the choices we already made. I think this was kind of the premise of The Matrix as well, which is interesting. The movie, I mean. And then it can even relate to errors in the processing of it. Because I think if we're in real time, in some moments, then the amount of computational power to process real-time images and physics and all of that is 
orders of magnitude greater than just watching a replay. Watching a replay of a game versus rendering out a frame of it is... It's not even the same, it's not even close. You can watch a movie on a potato, pretty much. Probably literally you could, but you definitely can't play games on it. Well, I don't think so. Maybe not yet. Reality is buffered and also quantumly immortal. So when we're dying, we're not really dying. We're just watching from maybe the real world, like jacked in, just to see how things went based on our choices. And then if we die, well, we're just switching servers and then just continuing. But we can continue or restart from like 10 seconds in the past. And I'm just going crazy here in my mind, but maybe there's buffered realities where we already made our choices, but then if we die in those and we restart in a new one, then we actually are in control. We're not just watching. So maybe there's buffered realities, but then when you die and you're going through quantum mortality, in that immediate moment after, you have to restart. It's like watching a replay and then just jumping into a new match after trying to perfect it. Saved lives and just going back like playing Crash Bandicoot back in the day and dying and just trying to beat the damn thing, but then watching someone else play and, you know, it's along those lines, but it's really watching yourself play. Huh. It's really cool. Makes your head spin a bit. The universe is gaslighting me. So while the universe does seem to be unstable, at least in some respect, may maybe the universe we're occupying now, I'm not sure if this relates to that. It might just be a trickster that's trying to mess with you. Because it just seems so precisely attuned to exactly what you would need for a prank. Because it reappeared exactly where you know you checked, like 20 times, as you mentioned. So, if I was a trickster, and I really wanted to mess with someone, that's what I would do. I would want to do it in a way where I could tell them that I was messing with them, at least a couple hours after, you know? Get their reaction and then say, okay, you're not crazy, don't worry, it's just me. <laughs> Case notes for file 883. The universe exiled me. So, exactly along the lines of the final line of your story is where my mind was going with all this, where I do believe there are transitory periods, servers that are dead, quote unquote, where no one else is in them, or maybe like 10 people that are just in a transitory phase towards the new universe they're going to occupy. It's like a lobby, just waiting to load in. And so yeah, you're in this place, somehow you had died, or for some reason were crossing over to a new universe, and of course no one was in it. So you just wind up in this auto body place and no one's there and you're so confused and then you go back, you're finally loaded into the new server and then the, the guy that you're not in the original universe anymore but he still exists in the new universe which you probably won't notice any differences because they're usually almost none if any at all. Because every new universe is spawned from the tiniest of interaction. It could be as something as simple as an atom bumping into another one differently than in a different universe. There's different branching paths just from that. It could be as small as that, where it's not discernible at all to us. So anyways, you're there, he, he's waiting, and wondering why the hell you didn't show up even though you did go, you just didn't go in that proper universe. You were quite a distance away. <laughs> but you can't tell him that, because I don't think he'd understand. <laughs> I do think, however, that our memories are supposed to be wiped of going to this transitory period. And for some reason, not being recently. Because these stories are popping up all over the place, and... I've never heard of them until like the last year, like the last few months even. It's very strange that we're remembering them. Case notes for file 884. The diaper bag that disproves reality. So yeah, I wouldn't disprove the possibility that this is indeed just some kind of prank. If you want to mess with the mom, mess with the diapers, right? <laughs> just add a random ones that shouldn't be there. It's conceivable. Just weird that your mom or sister or husband, no one is mentioning that it's a prank. It could be that though, if I had to bet money, I'd probably strike it up to that. Now, another possibility is that objects can de-render and re-render from within universes. So, if humans can cross over their souls, maybe physical matter can too, which would explain why some things reappear in places that they, they belong in, basically, but they're just a little different sometimes. That's actually very interesting. Huh. I could see that. It would indeed explain why there's a diaper in your bag that is, uh higher brand quality, not Kirkland. I mean, they're still reappearing in your bag though. Maybe it's just something you had bought in a different universe, it de-rendered in that one, and re-rendered in this one. It was assigned the wrong universal code, I guess. Case notes for file 885. The necklace to rule them all. So, the only logical, mundane explanation I can think of is that your boyfriend found the ring when you tossed it from, uh, to the vanity table. He didn't like it for some reason, maybe because it kept banging him during the intimacies. <laughs> So he pawned it off without you knowing. Somehow it ended up in this housekeeper's hands from her uh, brother. 
But I mean, the odds of that, so many layers of travel in that, it's kind of extraordinary, even if it is just mundane in that way. Also, I have to say, you know, props to you for going all that distance just to help someone that you, well, I mean, you said it was like an acquaintance of an acquaintance. You help someone who is suffering, so that's very kind of you. And I know I've had migraines in my life, it's not pleasant, so anything to help alleviate that in someone else is very, very appreciated. Case notes for the creepy file, number 70. The Mysterious Wire. So this does strike me as probably just some human that installed a device onto the truck for some reason. Although based on your other comments in the thread, I don't think it's a camera, but it might be a low voltage GPS tracker. Maybe there's some reason that some competing company or individual would want to track your truck's movements. I'm not sure, but maybe see if you can find where the wire is going to exactly. You may find some weird device or Maybe uh, blocked off by some metal shielding or something to make it look like it's part of the truck. Just spitballing here, but maybe something like that. Very creepy though, I would say. I wouldn't want to drive that truck. You never know. Case notes for file 886. The universe split my soul. I like to call these soul split events, where it's not even occurring consciously to the person it involves. And usually these stories are accounts from other people. They're witnessing it in their loved one or friend that is supposed to be somewhere else and they come home early, but then they ask the person when they actually get back for real and they never came home early and then just left suddenly. To read it from an account of someone that was not there and their friends are telling them they were is interesting. There were a couple stories I've read of that. Mostly like out of town people saying that you came to visit when you never even went to that town. Something like that. And also what's interesting to note is usually these soul fragments, divided souls, are able to interact with physical matter like opening doors and fridges and stuff like that that would make sound. Even like their, their boots on the floor. They still interact with real matter. Which is interesting indeed. What always surprises me is it doesn't appear like the person who soul is fragmented, feels anything at all. There's no uh, discomfort, there's no energy level crash or anything like that. They're none the wiser. So at least if your soul is temporarily fragmented, you don't feel anything if it returns to you. Maybe after a while you would, but not immediately. Case notes for the creepy file number 71. The Trailer Park Stalker. Well, you certainly have good instincts. You paid attention to your surroundings, you noticed the van, and how it was driving slower than it should have been. It's very easy to get lost in our podcasts or conversations, music, Spotify, etc. and not really be paying attention to our surroundings, but I would say that's a mistake. Obviously, enjoy your yourself and listen to podcasts and all that, but always be mindful of what's around you. You never know what threats are lurking behind every corner. You have to stay vigilant, and you did, so well done. Ultimately though, we have to deal with the fact that there are some people out there a small amount of people, but still some, that just aren't wired correctly. They're predators that haven't adapted to civilized society, and they've always existed. It's just that now they have to be a bit more careful. I'd have to say though, I'm particularly creeped out in the way you described that he was just squatting on the AC unit, staring in the window that was covered in blinds. It's like he was waiting for someone to open it and scare them. It doesn't seem to me like he was just interested in kidnapping someone, but actually terrifying them. And this is the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe away, plenty more to come. Case notes for file 887. YouTube Disrupted Time. So time anomalies, unless aliens are involved, I'm going to attribute towards the buffered reality that I believe we exist in. At least per universe, I think there's a buffered reality that we've already made the choices for, and now we're just experiencing it like a replay. Though, that said, Maybe it's possible to take control from replay and break away from fate. Restart, sort of. It may even explain why some people seem to be like NPCs, if you know what I mean. Just going with the motions. In the case of this glitch, where YouTube seems to have caused you to lose track of time, it's conceivable that you just zoned out and your memory went blank. Though I would look for any markings on your body, because it was at night, so it's conceivable that you were abducted and the memory is simply suppressed. The telltale signs of that are any kinds of markings that weren't there before, sometimes triangle patterns uh, like a bruise, and sometimes objects embedded within the skin. If you find nothing, then it may just be an anomaly of the universe itself, glitching out and skipping ahead. Case notes for file 888. When the universe decides to bake cookies. 
So this could be attributed supernaturally to some sort of ghost baker, but I think that's more my own uh, bias showing. <laughs> Having a ghost that wouldn't mind cooking for me, that's free employment right there. However, it may be something more akin to a parallel universe crossover, where I think if souls can cross over, perhaps it's possible for physical matter as well. So in a different universe, you correctly baked those cookies still in the air fryer, and they were there for your husband because in the other universe you had baked them. And in that universe, those cookies probably disappeared. So quite a horror show for them, but you benefit. Well, no, your husband benefits. Hard to argue with that. <laughs> Case notes for the bonus file. The old man next door. This was so heartwarming. And it makes sense if there's spirits, echoes, fragments of people who existed and died. If they're around still and somewhat sentient, they would want to interact with people. You know, if I pass away, somehow I would want to keep pranking people just because it's fun. And you wouldn't lose that sense of yourself because that is the whole point. It's a reverberation within the fields of life that you're still there and at least a part of you. So that pattern still exists and wouldn't be different. It would just be a bit faded. Anyways, what's most fascinating about this is the old man who presumably was a ghost was still there able to interact competently enough to pass as a full-grown human with physical matter. He wasn't translucent, he didn't pass through you, he was able to eat sandwiches, make sandwiches? I wonder where did he get the food for that? Was he raiding his widow, wife's fridge? I mean, where else would he get the food from? So maybe she noticed that the food was missing and just went with it. She actually is probably feeling that sense that he's still around. Curious that he interacts with you, the neighbor's kid, instead of her. Maybe he was interacting with her as well. I wonder if they had kids before. Maybe they didn't, and this was something that was missing in his life. Unfinished business, of sorts. To uh, interact and teach a daughter. Hmm. And those are my notes for tonight. I hope everyone has a lovely evening. Like and subscribe, and I'm out. See you tomorrow. Case notes for file 889. I control the world with my mind. I have heard of this before, in a few stories actually. Streetlight Interference, SLI. People's own EM spectrum is able to influence electronics, and electronics operate with electricity which is part of the EM spectrum, so there's nothing too crazy about that. Of course, they can't mentally control it. You know, re-watching Stargate Atlantis, I realized all the ancient technology is controlled through their brains. We even have devices today where you can control them with your mind. They're trying to perfect this so people who've lost limbs, they can have new arms attached, legs, and control them with their own minds. Just direct input. No mechanical process involved of like moving your arm a certain way to control your hand, which is weird. In this case, it only happened where you were touching the remote. So you had a direct physical contact with the remote and through that your brain could conduct the proper electrical signals in order to shut off the TV or turn it back on. Curious that the TV itself was glitching out after it turned back on though. I wonder what's up with that. Maybe as you control this power, even subconsciously, it has to increase your EM field and that's when things glitch out around you. A lot of sense to that. Very cool. I would actually try to consciously control this because it's sort of a superpower in a way, right? You might be on your way to becoming Magneto. Case notes for file 890, the universal souvenir. So there's a small disconnect here where some items de-render and re-render and that's it. Uh, just seemingly at random. Sometimes they duplicate though and that's the really weird part. What's causing the duplication? Is it an error of de-rendering within multiple parallel universes? So one is just re-rendering in this universe when it's supposed to be in the neighboring parallel universe and in that one, the item is just gone forever, never reappearing because it's in this universe now. And it really is a copy of it because you mentioned there's a hole, so it's not like you accidentally bought two somehow or someone else did, unless they did and also carved a hole exactly where it was in the original. I mean, unless it's a prank, a very deliberate weird prank, not even a prank really. I have no explanation for that besides duplicating object phenomena, which I think must come from another universe. There's too much energy inbound within any physical object. It's insane how much energy even a hoodie has. If you converted all the energy of all the atoms within a hoodie, I mean, you're talking about enough to wipe out an entire city. More. It's absolutely crazy. So that energy has to come from somewhere. And the only thing I can think of is another universe. Case notes for file 891. 
my son vanished without a trace. By far the most bewildering aspect to this is that your son didn't remember anything from the point where he vanished to the point where he appeared in the closet. There's a memory gap. Was it an alien abduction? I don't think so. There was no obvious signs of that. Normally alien abductions, if there are other people around, they do notice something going on. Lights, not usually much sound, but still, it wouldn't just happen randomly like that when there's a bunch of people around. So was this a case of him, your son, de-rendering completely? And then just reappearing? You know, this could explain doppelgangers. Just occurred to me. If objects can duplicate, and that duplication is from a, another universe, a parallel universe, what if they de-render accidentally from that universe and reappear in this one? Doppelganger. Now in this case, it doesn't seem like there's any duplication, but it's just very strange that sometimes we can de-render, and it seems to happen to kids often. Hmm. I wonder in those moments, was your son within that one of those worlds where everything is dead, no one is around? But like I assume, we're not supposed to remember that if we go there. If it's a transitory period where you're going to a new universe, maybe. Uh, but he reappeared in the original universe where you missed him, so I don't think it would be that case. And usually it would be the soul, not the whole body. Maybe it is the case where he went, it's just something that's my own theory that's wrong, I don't know. For one state or another, he does appear to have de-rendered completely. Or, the other possibility, and there appears to be a lot of possibilities on these uh, de-renders, is that there was indeed a portal, a space-time portal, he simply stepped through it without realizing, and then just was ported forward in time, not space. There you go. That would explain it, but where do these portals come from? How are they generated? And really, wormholes like this aren't supposed to be stable, and they're supposed to be so tiny an atom could barely fit through. These shouldn't be a product of the universe as far as we know. Something would have to be generating them seemingly at random. Why bother with some random kid from some normal house? I don't know which explanation is proper here, but there's a lot of them, which is cool. Keeps the mystery alive. You've reached the end of the video. Like and subscribe. See you tomorrow. Case notes for file 892. The phone call that shattered reality. My impression here is that indeed you were supposed to take the job. This is all playing out sort of like fate. And you know how Google now has a voice assistance that can mimic human voices? It's all AI generated, but it sounds like a human being. They can take phone calls for you and so on. Um, at least it's a feature I saw in a YouTube video a long time ago. I don't know if they've actually implemented it, but it sounded like just a real human. If you didn't want to take a phone call or something along those lines, the AI would do it for you. So sort of like that, but instead of an AI from a tech giant doing that, it's on the level of the developers of the universe. Sort of adjustment bureau style, but instead of for love, it's for work. I do think you were supposed to take the job, but you didn't, and I think you're going on your own path now. Case notes for file 893, my ninja cat. You physically pet her, and also fed her a treat. So it couldn't have been some ghostly form or projected soul of your cat. It had to have been really, truly your cat, in physical, pure physical form. It couldn't be universal peering as well, because it's the same lines. It's not just sight. Your cat really was there, both upstairs and downstairs. And as you say, there's no way for your cat to have snuck past you. Even if the cat is really quick, and some of them are, there's no way they could have been that fast, without making a sound. You would have seen or heard your cat, so the only avenue I see left is some sort of space-time portal. Usually you experience those while driving, but that simply could be because you are traveling through more space-time, and as such, because you're crossing through so much space-time, there's more points in time where you have a chance to cross through a, a portal. That or your cat really is just a ninja. Maybe. Case notes for the creepy file number 72. His name was Charles. In a way, this is actually heartwarming. Was it just a lonely spirit that somehow made the ground more permeable so that you would interact with him on a physical level, collapsing into the grave? I wonder if there is a physical component to that. Is interacting with the uh, remains of a spirit going to connect you to them? Maybe it's in a way that they can know your own mind and history, connecting with your soul, but it requires that physical connection. You have a lot of lore and fiction where you have to interact or destroy the bones, salt them, to expunge a spirit from this world. Maybe there's something to that. The physical remnants matter. I wonder if you're cremated, are you expunged automatically? Do you never come back as a ghost or as a f echo fragment? Is it simply wiped clean from the universe? This universe? Perhaps. Regardless, I didn't get any malevolent vibes from this. It seems to me that it was just a lonely spirit trying to connect. Case notes for the bonus file. 
ghostly steps. This could be a simple case of universal peering, given that you noted that your brother in where you saw him upstairs was wearing different clothes than the brother downstairs who was truly him in full physical form. If you astral project, normally whoever is astrally projected, they're wearing the exact same clothing, same hairstyle, they're just copy of themselves projected into the universe via their soul. It's almost like an after image effect in <laughs> Dragon Ball Z or something along those lines. Given that's not the case, your brother as seen was wearing different clothing, my guess is it was simply him in true form but in a different parallel universe. In that case, he was just wearing something different and was upstairs in those moments, whereas in your original universe, he was not. Thus concludes my notes for tonight. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe, see you tomorrow. Case notes for file 894, I can see through the universe. Yeah, I simply refer to these stories as universal peering events. I remember the first one I read of a maintenance man. He was checking out an apartment building that was going to be rented out. There was nothing in it, of course. He enters, it's completely barren, no furniture. Then he turns to the bathroom and then turns back to the living area and it's fully stocked, furnished, everything. In my view, the only possibility going on there is that sometimes some people are able to perceive other universes as they are in that state. It's not related to time at all. These parallel universes are running concurrently with our own, with all of them together at the same time. It's just that different events can lead to different outcomes at the same moment in time the same universal or multiversal clock you could say. What's curious is often this involves looking through a mirror, and of course there are mirrors in bathrooms, so I wonder if there's any connection there. Seeing the mirror, the way light reflects, maybe there's something involved there that enables universal peering to trigger the event to start or stop, kind of a play on the mind, uh, programming if x then y, something along those lines. Could be as simple as that. But it is purely speculation at this point, I really don't know what triggers universal peering, only that it seems to happen fairly frequently. Case notes for file 895, the magical bathtub. I would have to chalk this up most likely to a sleepwalking event, and even if you have no history of it, there are many adults who simply develop it as a symptom of some other disease or even just randomly with no underlying cause. It's strange, but it does happen. Now, if it isn't that, if it is supernatural or glitch-based, is there any limit to what can be de-rendered? So, an object, physical object can de-render, a tennis ball, necklace, whatever it may be. But what about the blockage within the pipe for your bathtub? If you de-render that blockage, whatever prevents the water from flowing through, well then the bathtub would fill up, and then maybe it re-rendered itself eventually, after the tub was full, and voila. I guess it would depend on if you had to shut off the faucet when you went to check the bathtub. If you didn't, then this could actually fit. The blockage de-rendered, the tub filled up, overfilled, and then it reappeared. And then, none the wiser, it seemed like that some something must have turned it on, but really, it just was universal de-rendering. I'm not entirely sold on that, but it's not impossible if there's no limit on what can be de-rendered. Let's just hope that nothing super important ever de-renders, like nuclear power plants or other critical areas like that. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Case notes are file 896. Do cats possess supernatural powers? So in the comments I read someone mention that this is a duplicat kind of glitch. <laughs> I do love jokes that play on words. But yeah, there's a lot of feline based glitches this week. In this event though, you never physically touched her, as far as I can tell, so it could have simply been astral projection. Your cat was apparently sleeping indoors, and these astral projection events don't always happen when someone is sleeping, but it does seem to be more frequent then. In a sense, I guess it's the brain having to indicate to the soul to disconnect or fragment and then appear somewhere else, if the brain is in charge of that. So it makes sense when it's sleeping because we're actually more active, our mind is more active when we're asleep. I think the same is true for cats or any living organism that sleeps. So it could be a case of astral projection or maybe cats are just hitching portals all the time, although less likely in this case because again, your cat was sleeping indoors. Soundly, it sounds like. <laughs> the end of my notes have arrived. I hope everyone has a lovely Christmas and happy holidays. I'll see you all tomorrow as well for a special Christmas edition Sleepless File.